just say, just say let's send it back to the Plain Wisconsin broadcast booth. Now we'll hear the Good afternoon and welcome. This is the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth. We are live in Mount Horb, Wisconsin for the 2017 Steel Sports Steel Timber Sports Midwest Qualifier. I'm Tony Cartagena. I'm joined by Adam Mertz. Adam, how's it going today? We had a lovely day out here. It's kind of a, a hot day, 87, but we got a nice breeze. I think these guys will be enjoying the conditions out there, Tony. Yeah, great day here. Like I said, Mount Horb, Wisconsin. We are at Grundle Park for the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. We're going to have eight competitors today. Four of them will qualify for the national championship that is going to take place at German Fest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Adam, you were able to be a part of this last year. Uh, give us a little bit of insight to what we're going to see this afternoon. You know, you've seen this on TV probably a lot of times. The big tournaments are on ESPN. And uh, you until you witness it live, it's a different spectacle entirely. These guys, not only are they really skilled in, at technical aspects of this, but they are athletes. Don't confuse it. You'll see it today on the TV screen. Some events, you'll be up seven feet in the air chopping a saw. Others uh, require a lot of balance. You're going to see a lot of athleticism today, Tony. Yeah, and one of the cool things that I, that I saw, we got out here a little bit earlier, got to meet some of the competitors, and saw them out there preparing, preparing their tools, if you will. Uh, some, of the, some of the axes are in specialty made cases and things like that. So a lot of time a lot of, and a ton of effort goes into this. We are definitely thankful to be a part of the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Series in Mount Horeb for the Midwest Regional Qualifier. Like I said, eight competitors today. We're going to see six different disciplines put on display. And at the end of the day, we are going to have four qualifiers for the national championship that's going to take place in Mount Horror, Wisconsin, or in, uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, at German Fest. Yeah, it, you know, last year it was a really heated competition here. And these guys, especially the, Matt Koger was coming in as the defending U.S. champion. The guys underneath him are pretty equal. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as you know, Matt could have a bad day today and leave everything in the mix, he's definitely the favorite. But these guys are, are really given everything they can because that national event is the one that you want to be on and make a name for yourself. Uh, some of the events that we will see today, all six of them actually, we're going to start things off with the springboard. That is, I know, Adam, one of your favorites. Absolutely. Because you are able to see people not only chop wood but then have to propel themselves up to the to the final rung there. Uh, we're also going to see the stock saw, the single buck, the standing block, underhand, and the hot saw. So a lot of fun things going to be going on all afternoon here at Grundle Park in Mount Hoare, Wisconsin for the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. Uh, Adam, in just in a little bit, we're going to be able to meet some of the talent here. You mentioned Matt Koger, who is the defending national champion, and from all accounts seems to be the favorite today. Yeah, absolutely, and and it's one of those. These guys know each other well. This is a small community of of the really elite athletes. Uh, he he comes in as the front runner, and it's through a lot of hard work. It's a guy that's had a long history in the sport, um, and and uh, you know one other guy is that uh, you should watch out for today, and one that I should mention even before the competition end of it is Adam LaSalle, who's a competitor and really organizes this event. He's the guy who comes down earlier in the week and sets up the stage and built a lot of the equipment that you'll see here today. He hands Licks the logs and preps the logs yes. along with a lot of his competitors. These guys, they're in it together 
for most of the week, and today it's a competition. And it's not one of those things I think people think, oh, we're in Wisconsin, this is something that ha – only one of our competitors today is from Wisconsin. And, Adam, you had a conversation earlier with a representative who let you know that four of the eight today actually just got done in Sydney, Australia. That's a 24-hour flight to get there alone to, uh, to compete in their Easter games. Yeah, well, and what a cool experience to uh, be able to show this sport off in, a, in a Sydney, Australia to a different uh, audience. That was uh, uh, Matt Coger, Derek Knutson, Adam LaSalle, and Jason Lance all had that opportunity. Yeah, we are going to uh, introduce everyone to the competitors here in a minute. Things are just getting set up. Uh, we're, what, 10 feet away from the springboard challenge, so we're going to have wood bits and sawdust flying around all <laughs> over this place. But it's a beautiful day here at Grundle Park. It is uh, – a great event. This is the first time I've been a, uh, a part of that, but I'm very, very excited and honored to be here. And, uh, yeah, we are very, very excited to uh, to continue. In just a second here, we are going to hear from Chamber Director Melissa Thiessen. Uh, she's going to be joined by our sideline reporter, Bryce Hopwood, in a little bit. So we're going to cover this from all different angles today, uh, whether it's uh, talking to the winners, going play-by-play uh, -play analysis of the events, and, like I said, people who help make this event possible like uh, Melissa Thiessen the cha of the Chamber, who is going to be joined shortly by, by our Bryce Hopwood. want to remind everyone what we're doing here today, 2017 Steel Timber Sports Series. It's at Grundle Park in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. Eight competitors today, including the defending national champion, Matt Koger. We are going to have four of today's qualifiers qualify for the national championships at German Fest in Milwaukee. You know, and, and uh, Tony, the other cool thing about this event is this uh, the Summer Frolic is a big community affair in Mount Horeb, and they drew, boy, there's 500, 600, 700 people out here last year in this natural amphitheater. I expect a lot of that same crowd today. Uh, Adrian Flicht and Sam, who do the PA out there, really get people fired up. And now we're going to kick it over to our sideline reporter, Bryce Hopwood, with Melissa Thiessen. Hey guys, I'm here with Melissa Thiessen, Chamber Director, and uh, you know what, Melissa, does this uh, does this event mean to have in Mount Hor for this smaller community? These guys have been chopping their way into our hearts for since last year. We are so glad that they're back. It means so much to us, uh, for our community, for we just uh, it's just it's just a wonderful thing. We do see a huge uh, amount of uh, gathering here already in the early goings. Uh, does, has this pulled the community even more together here, uh, being this the second year? It certainly has. They, everybody comes together from a volunteer, from the businesses, from the volunteers, the residents, and you know, surrounding Wisconsin. Uh, this really puts us on a national level, if, if you will, even an international level. People you know, watch this competition in Germany and in Australia, and so we're so proud that they picked Mount Hora to be at a location for their regional competition. All right, thank you, Melissa Thiessen, Chamber Director here in Mount Horb. And now it's back to Tony and Adam in the Play in Wisconsin booth. Thanks, Bryce. Thank you, Melissa. We are all very excited to be here. And we would also not be here without some of the great sponsors of today's event. I would like to give a huge, huge thank you to Richie's Implement, The Electrician, Weaver Auto Parts, Hellwig Auto of Mount Horeb, Play in Wisconsin, and MHTC. We would also like to thank Brick Road Public Relations for their support with our media placement for the Wisco Media Group, Wisco Radio, and the Steel Timber Sports event. And here you can follow us not just on TV, but also on social media today, like Wisco Radio on Facebook. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And use our hashtag, Wisco Hot Saw. Wisco Hot Saw, I like that hashtag. That sounds like a fun one. Adam, while we get things underway here, I want to introduce today's participants, today's competitors in the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier for the Steel Timber Sports, starting with Matt Koger. Matt's a, a second generation timber sports athlete. Uh, his dad, pa Paul Koger, was a, a long time well-known competitor at this event. Um, he also has a cousin, Arden Koger, in it as well. This is a guy who uh, is, the, is the man. He is the man out there. He's from Diana, West Virginia. And to give you an idea about the athleticism and the size of these guys, not surprising. There's a lot of big guys out there. Absolutely. Matt is 6'4", 245. That's a defensive end. Exactly. <laughs> that is legitimately a defensive end 
who's going to be propelling himself up trees and working a hot saw and different things today. Uh, Matt has been participating since 2009. And a fun fact about him, he's probably not a huge fan of the Stanley Cup Finals right now because his favorite sports team, the Boston Bruins, oh. who got eliminated early yes. on in the NHL playoffs. Moving on, though. Jason Lentz, another one of those guys who could probably double as a defensive end in the NFL because from Diana, West Virginia as well, Jason Lentz, it, Lentz is six foot six, 245 pounds. He's a fourth generation lum lumberjack. You know, a lot of these guys, as we mentioned before, have been around this sport for a long time. To get to this level, it's not something that you, that most guys anyway, pick up the ax and start swinging and next thing you know, you're out here. Uh, Jason has started in 1998, so he's you know almost 20 years into this sport, and he's seven years in on the Timber Sport Series itself. Moving on, Mike Sullivan, who has been on the series since 1985, won the championship back then. He is the only guy to be involved in all of the Timber Sports Championships to date. He is from Colebrook, Connecticut, 6'1", 205, and yes, that's one of the smaller competitors in today's field. That is Mike Sullivan been doing this since 1985 his advice to people who want to get involved just keep doing it it's a grind but just keep getting involved and keep participating in sports that you love and uh, Mike is 57 out there today and still swinging it he does p90x in the offseason as a lot of these guys do this is a weightlifting type sport you don't just show up and start swinging these heavy saws that is that Eddie Lacy type workout if you're uh, familiar with the Green Bay yes. Packers that's yes. what he was all about minus the China food <laughs> Uh, Richard Jordan, he is from Sterling, Connecticut, five foot eight, two hundred pounds. He is big on traveling and riding his Harley. Uh, there will be some traveling involved with this sport as well as uh, Melissa Thiessen from the Chamber told us a little bit earlier that they travel all over the country and they are all over the world. It is an international sport. They do things all over the place. He has been participating since 1987. He That's was going in back the, a ways. Yeah, he was in the Steel Timber Sports in 2000 and 2011 series. He's also been competing with Woodman's competitions uh, since, since the 80s. So uh, credit Richard Jordan for really sticking it out. Yeah, and, you know, and, and as some of these guys are, Adam LaSalle, uh, who we'll get to later, he's, he's in forestry. Richard's a logger. I mean, these guys kind of grow up in this environment, and it's nice when you have that because your training is your job. I'm uh, moving on as we're about to get close to the first discipline here today. We have Cassidy Shear, 6'2", 190. Uh, uh, very involved uh, from the uh, pat, uh, lumberjacking has been passed down from, from family members. Uh, been involved in this for over 25 years. And then the l uh, rounding up the field here, we have Derek Knudsen, uh, who has been participating since log rolling since the age of four. <laughs> I don't even think I could ride a bike then. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> Derek, Derek Knutson, and then finalized by Ben Hansen. Ben Hansen is our final competitor of the day. And as we get things going today, it is time for the Springboard Chop as one of the most prominent events at the Steel Timber Sports Series. It's as close as many competitors get to speed climbing often ties in with the hot saw as the last discipline a competitor will learn before trying to crack the ranks of the top U.S. competitors in the series. Competitors first climb a nine-foot trunk at the top, and then they use an ax to chop an 11-piece of white pine. When both competitors have finished the task, the heat will conclude. In this heat here, Tony, we have Derek Knutson against Ben Hans, and now these guys are squaring off at the same time, but not against each other. These are time competitions, all eight uh, competitors will go through and it'll score inverse scoring is a chance to discuss this goes from f uh, four points for the top spot three for the second two for third and one for fourth which I think which I think makes it a little easier because as you're doing something that has to be so precise as a springboard you don't want to be in a rush you don't want to be looking across from you and thinking all right I got to get this board in there so I can so I can beat my competitor it is I just have to post the best top possible time for me absolutely race against yourself this, this is my favorite event, just because you look at the dynamics here. Yeah, that's, a, that's a piece of wood they're jamming in. There is a metal clip on the end of it, so they're not just kind of putting it in a wedge. It's mm -hmm. digging into the upside of the tree underneath, but you still have to be pretty secure in your placement there. And, and as you see, the top, of this, uh, the top of this tree right here is an 11-inch thick white pine that they're chopping through, which is no easy task. 
And Derek Knutson uh, taking that heat. And then you just stand up there and uh, stand up there and wait. It's like sitting <laughs> at the top of the totem pole. Check it out. Catch your breath before you have to get back down. It is interesting once you see the 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 white pine finally get chopped all the way through. It's uh, the sigh of relief on the competitor's face, but also the uh, kind of unexpected. It's almost like a game of Jenga. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And you just hope you're not one of the pieces. <laughs> the pieces flying off of this really are quite quite impressive. Ben Hansen still making his way through this white pine, about to fall down here. Should be his last one there, and the white pine hits the ground, and uh, we are going to queue up a uh, queue up a replay here. And you take a look at uh, Derek Knutson on the left side of your screen. He's really digging in on that thing. He had a nice angle, and he was able to do a nice back cut there to finish off that white pine. Good start for Derek Knutson. Very, very strong start. Uh, you mentioned Derek Knutson earlier as being one of the guys who traveled to Sydney, Australia as part of the uh, the Steel Timber Sports and got to put on a little bit of a display there. You know, that, you know that aspect of this discipline that I like to watch, you're talking about a lot of balance, not just getting up on the springboard itself, but you're getting to that top and you're swinging through, but you can't follow through all the way and let your body kind of carry. You have to kind of hit that wood and make sure you have some secure wood. You saw there at the end at that last heat, it, Ben was taking his time as he got to the end because you don't want to swing through and knock that thing off and have your momentum carry you through. Absolutely, and uh, as we uh, continue on, yeah, as we continue on here, we um, want to give a shout out to another one of our sponsors, that is MHTC, who um, is obviously making today possible possible here along with all of our other guys want to remind everyone to follow us on twitter and on instagram at wisco radio residents from mount hora blue mounds and dodgeville count on mhtc for high quality affordable high speed internet digital tv and phone service high speed wireless services available to residents in barneveld hollandale mineral point and rural dodgeville Visit MHTC online at MHTC.net or call 608-437-5551. MHTC, world-class technology with hometown values. And now we kick it back over to our sideline reporter, Bryce, with Derek Knutson. Hey, Derek, you got you seem to explode out of that first run on your first couple chops. Uh, you had a great time there. What was, uh, what was going into that? Yeah, uh, I climbed pretty good. It was all right. I missed a couple hits, but... Uh, Overall got up there fairly strong, had some good boards. Um, chopped well, the wood's a little dry, uh, a bit firm, but overall it was a pretty decent chop, I'll take it. Does the wind have anything to do with the springboard event we have right here? Uh, yeah, it kind of does. Um, I've been a speed climber for 15 years, so I'm okay with being up there in heights, and uh, I just try not to think about it. Perfect, perfect, well thank you. And we're gonna send it back to Tony and Adam in the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth. Thanks. Thanks, Bryce. That was Derek Knutson, the winner of the, uh, the the first heat, but like we said earlier, his time can always be surpassed by one of the competitors because it's not so much head-to-head -head competition as it is you're competing against seven other competitors in the first discipline, which is the springboard. And it sounds like we are going to get heat two underway. Uh, the three seed, Richard Jordan, against Adam LaSalle. Richard Jordan against Adam LaSalle in the second heat of the springboard discipline in just a couple of minutes. Adam LaSalle, as you mentioned, is the uh, kind of the, the brains and brawn behind the operation. He does a lot of the setup coming into this week. Uh, really cool guy. Had a lot of time uh, to talk with him last year, and he's invested in this sport beyond what you could possibly imagine. Very, very cool stuff. I, I did get a chance to chat with him earlier today as we are about to get underway here in heat two of the springboard. Contestants ready. And as you're looking at your screen, that's Adam LaSalle on the right. Richard Jordan on your left. Ad Ad Adam LaSalle already the first springboard up. I'm Richard Jordan up, up there as well. Wood flying everywhere. One just landed on my foot. That's <laughs> impressive because that is that's not as close as one would think. He is. They are chopping away. Oh, and Adam does not like his placement on that one. He had to get back down and start over on his second board. Yeah, a little uncomfortable with uh, 
the flexibility of the board there, which that's the, I think that would be the scariest part to me is just making sure that that plank is not going to fall out. Absolutely. Credit Adam for uh, for testing it and then making moves to do otherwise. I mean, you can tell, you know, you really got to keep your calm in a situation like that. I'm sure you start shifting into panic mode as the internal clock is ticking if you're Adam LaSalle, thinking you're already up on the second board and having to start over. As both guys are now chopping through 11 inches of white pine. They're about nine, they're about seven feet in the air. The the pole here is nine feet in total. So these competitors, not a seven feet off the ground on a plank, chopping through 11 inches of wood. We were talking uh, before the show started about the, uh, boy, how sharp those axes are. It could be sharp enough to shave. Tru truly I'll unbelievable. I'll stick with my chick. <laughs> And Richard Jordan, he is through the white pine. Hands his ax down and is going to wait for uh, for Adam LaSalle to finish up here. You know, this is kind of a this is a tough way to start the day for Adam LaSalle. He's one of the guys, the uh, four who qualified through for nationals last year. There's plenty of time to come back off of a start like this. If you're solid in all disciplines, there is. But you don't want to be in the hole this early if you don't have to. And we got a, a quick replay coming up here of Richard Jordan uh, finishing briefly before Adam LaSalle was in heat two of the springboard. And when you look back at the replay, I think Adam LaSalle's troubles really started when he put that second plank in and was unable. Uh, he, w he didn't feel comfortable with it. So he went back, cho chopped away to, to get to a spot where he knew that he would be stable up there. And, and that's where the time, I think, got away from him a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I was watching it, too. And, uh, you know, I'm a layman, essentially, in this sport. But I saw that springboard buckle, and I wasn't comfortable with it either. No, not not whatsoever. And that's one of the things we're watching this. I You start to question, all right, are, like these guys have to have a ton of faith in what they're doing. But that's why they're they're the best in the world at this, and that's why Absolutely. they are on display today. And, uh, and we are going to go back over to our sideline reporter, Bryce Hopwood. He is with Richard Jordan. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Richard Jordan. You know, Richard, you saw Adam kind of struggle with that uh, board there. Did that give you a sense of time? No, no. Doesn't tell you other than, you, you know, I have a good shot at beating him, but you don't know what the time is. Going in the second heat, you know, you saw what the first guys did. Do you kind of have that internal clock that kind of, you, you know what you have to be or be around to kind of keep yourself in the heat? Yeah, you more or less know by what the last guy did. All right, perfect. Thanks, and I'm going to send it back to the Play in Wisconsin booth here. Thanks so much, Bryce. Great work there. I want to thank our sponsor, Richie Implement. Richie Implement is your steel headquarters and the area's leading dealer in new and used farm equipment, ATVs, lawn and garden equipment, and snowmobiles. Conveniently located in Cobb, Darlington, and Barneville, Wisconsin, Richie's is big enough to serve you and small enough to know you. Stop in at one of their locations today and check out their complete line of steel product at richiesinc.com. That's richiesinc.com. Com. Tony Cartagena and Adam Mertz with you today. We are live from the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. We have eight competitors here today. Four of them will qualify for the national championship at German Fest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We've seen two heats come through already in the springboard. It was Derek Knudsen against Ben Hansen, Knudsen finishing first there. And then Richard Jordan against Adam LaSalle. Ad, or Adam LaSalle struggled a little bit with one of his planks. Richard Jordan came through on top, but watching this sport for live for the first time and credit anyone who is brave enough to not only pick up an ax, but then climb seven feet and chop their way through 11 inches of white pine. It is unbelievable athleticism that is on display here today. There is no doubt about that in my mind. When we talked a little bit before about how a lot of these guys are in the profession of logging or forestry or something associated with that, with that so their job is their practice. The other aspect of this is that there's a pretty uh, strong, a very strong collegiate series that Steel sponsors, and that'll be the first exposure for a lot of these guys coming through. You know, some people uh, go hang out at the Union, you know, in Madison, and some chop wood instead. You know, that's a different kind of club that you do in college. We talked a lot about Adam LaSalle as being one of the guys who you know, really gets out here early. He helps set all this up. He puts all this effort in. He was the 2009 collegiate champion at the University of Wisconsin in Stevens Point. 
Looks like we got our third heat starting up here in just a couple of minutes. Heat number three is going to be Cassidy Shear against Jason Lentz. That's Cassidy Shear and Jason Lentz in heat three of the springboard. And as you can see, there's a lot of work here by the prep crew in between these heats. They let two go, and then they set up for the next two, so they're able to roll straight through. The interesting about, you see a lot of these guys out here that are that are doing the, uh, the prep work. Many of them will be competing tomorrow in the open competition, also here at Grundle Park. And the reason, the background behind that is that you need to have qualifying times to be considered even for a, a, quali for a Midwest qualifier mm -hmm. such as this. And they don't just do it by sending in YouTube videos or whatnot. They have to do it in the same conditions that these uh, uh, top level guys are competing. So a lot of these guys will come out tomorrow and set basically qualifying times for themselves that they can submit, try to get out of the regional series next year. And for those who want to experience this live, if you're watching the live broadcast of this, you want to experience this live tomorrow, get out to Grundle Park in Mount Horeb. It's an absolutely great time. They got their Frolic Festival going on, and you can come and see world class athletes. And yes, that's what I'm calling the Lumberjacks today, world-class athletes, because the athleticism that it takes to not only chop through wood, but to do it in the times that they do it and under the circumstances, it's absolutely incredible. As you guys can see, heat number three just about to get underway, and that's Cassidy Shear versus Jason Lentz. Cassidy Shear and Jason Lentz as Cassidy looks to pump up the crowd <laughs> a little bit as things are about to get underway momentarily. Three, two, one, go. For those watching at home, Adam and I feel much safer with the competition happening on the other side of the broadcast <laughs> as we are not in the line of fire of wood, chopped wood flying in our direction. Cassidy's an interesting case. Reading through his bio, there's different varieties, I guess I'd say, of lumberjacking sports, timber mm -hmm. sports. He came up through the log rolling end and the log, the speed climbing. Uh, so he's only been recently introduced to this aspect of it. Yes, and, 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 and Jason Lentz is chopping through 11 inches of white pine right at the top of the pole. He had a, go got, had a good eight or nine hacks in before Cassidy was able to get up there and start hacking away at the white pine. So, interested to see where this lands out, but Jason Lentz, I mean, just a massive human being, as you can tell. Yes. Uh, he's got to have that plank secured a little bit <laughs> a little bit more in there, because uh, when, you're, when you're one of the bigger guys in the competition. When you, and you look at uh, this event, is talk about the precision here. Cassidy, a little bit newer to this discipline, to the chopping and sawing. It took him a while to get his second wedge in. Yes. Um, he's trying to look for the exact placement. A lot of these guys may be a little more instinctive when you've been doing it for 20 years. Yes, absolutely. Jason Lentz finishing first. And and just in one of the more baller moves that I've seen today, climbs on down on his own. Doesn't hand over the X, just climbs on down the pole and walks around like he owns the place. But when you're as skilled as Jason Lentz is, Obviously, you can make that look easy. And you're 6'6", 240. You know, you're going to yeah. tell people what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's uh, he's seven feet off the ground, but but he's almost seven feet tall. As we go to a replay from Heat 3 of the Springboard competition, Jason Lentz edging out Cassidy Shear. The V-cut form by, by Lentz is interesting. After he gets about halfway through, he starts hacking away from the other side. Yes. It only took him about four or five cuts to really get through and knock that off the totem. You know, you picture a lot of the core strength coming through in an event like this, and uh, obviously Jason Lentz has it pretty well put together in the shoulders as well. We got one more heat in the springboard competition. That is going to be Mike Sullivan versus Matt Koger. Matt Sullivan against Matt Koger. Uh, Adam, you were here last year when Matt Koger was qualifying for the national championship that he then went on to be victorious in. Just one of the superstars of timber sports adam koger or matt koger excuse me that's adam mertz sitting next to me he is not a uh, a timber sport lumberjack but not not yet anyways yeah I, and they will not be inviting me out tomorrow for the open competition either <laughs> when's the last time you swung an axe uh i actually do that i wouldn't say regularly but okay. often enough when you got a fire pit in your backyard you oh, gotta do a little enough. work you know 
Yes, uh, I have an apartment, so I don't have a fire pit. <laughs> I can't tell you I've ever been this close to an axe before, but I'm very, very excited to be here. If you here. have to swing an axe, that means you broke the uh, uh, the fire thing, you broke through the glass, <laughs> and you're taking care of some business you want to be taken care of. Yes, that would probably be the only time I'd be swinging an axe. And uh, I believe right before the fourth heat gets underway, Mike Sullivan uh, going to be the left of your screen, and uh, Matt Koger about to get underway here in the fourth heat of the Springboard Challenge. Right after this competition uh, concludes, we will have a live interview with Jason Lentz, the winner of heat number three. Oh, and Adam, we are, we are for sure in the line of fire here. Matt, Matt Koger is uh, working his way up there. Mike Sullivan and him seem to be pretty, pretty much on pace with one another as they are working that second plank in Matt Coger is a guy who's uh, invested himself full time in this profession, in this uh, discipline. Uh, a lot of these other guys are still, you know, the, hacking away at their day jobs. He's been able to throw himself deep into this. Yeah, uh, Adam, you should probably get Matt Coger to chop the wood for your fire pit from now on because he is just making this look unbelievably easy, as all the competitors here are today. Mike Sullivan and Matt Coger seem to be pretty on pace with one another as they are chopping through 11 inches of white pine. And I, I, I continue to reiterate that because uh, that is one tough piece of wood to chop through. This is not slicing bread. <laughs> this, is, Correct. this is much, Correct. much harder. As Matt Coger with a massive chop to well, knock the top strong, off of he? that. He finished unbelievably strong. Look at him standing there, crouched over a little bit. It's hot. It's 87 degrees. He's winded, but he just hacked through that wood there like a beast. How intimidating is it? I know that we discussed a number of times already that you're not competing directly against the individual cross from you. But, man, that's that's a tough, uh, you know, person to compare yourself up against. Absolutely, and I, li and I, and I like the competitors, and we're about to get to get a replay here. Jason Lentz cheering on Mike Sullivan as as, 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 as he wrapped things up. As he wrapped things up. And we are going to go over to Bryce Hopwood. He is with heat number three winner, Jason Lentz. So here I am with Jason Let's Jason, your dad, Mel, won a couple U.S. championships. Uh, what does that mean for you here now in the Midwest Regionals and your uh, story career to this point? Oh, yeah, it's a big deal for me. I come from uh, a generation, fourth generation of uh, Lentz competitors. Um, they started back in the 30s, and um, I'm continuing the sport as we go into the 2000s. Love it. Love it. You did a great job. I'll let you get on to the stock on next. Thank you, sir. Back to Tony and Adam. That was Jason Lentz, who won heat number three of the springboard competition. Matt Koger, defending national champion, won heat four, did it in very, very impressive fashion as well. Matt Koger, one of the superstars, definitely, of this sport. Uh, and it looks like just momentarily we're going to send it back over to Bryce Hopwood, once again, star of the show, Matt Koger. Thanks, guys. Uh, Matt, you know, you had a quick time up there. Got a couple chops in right away and got into the first board. What does it mean with the wind, you know, to get only a couple chops down before you uh, get going? Uh, it's just, it, you know, it's a good, good uh, event to get the blood pumping. Uh, that's really, really rough on that one, actually. And uh, uh, there's a lot of technical stuff you got to go through. And, uh, you know, I'll just sort of learn from this and just continue on. And just hopefully the rest of the day goes better than that. But. Well, you, look, you sure look good from over here, so good work. Right. Go get your rest in good. and uh, hydrate. Thanks. Thanks, guys, and now back to you guys. After a great, great opening discipline of the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier, we are going to head to break, but coming up right after the break, we have more Steel Timber Sports action for you, including the stock saw, standing block, single buck, and the underhand chop. More action to come live from the Midwest Qualifier in Mount Horeb. Tony Cartagena, Adam Mertz with you. We'll be right back from the Steel Timber Sports Series.
so I don't know what to really do with that. And welcome back. This is the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier for the Steel Timber Sports. Tony Cartagena and Adam Mertz live from Grundle Park in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. We just finished up a, a great, great first round. The springboard competition got to talk to all the winners. Matt Koger, the defending national champ, made it look easy and then came over to the sidelines and said that he thought he underperformed. <laughs> You know, when you have high standards, I guess uh, lofty. It's, it's hard to hard to live up to your own expectations. But I thought he looked pretty fantastic out there myself. Absolutely, as did I. Uh, we're gonna have score updates and timing results from that. All of our score updates throughout the day are gonna be brought to you by Weaver. Weaver Auto Parts in Mount Horeb. Leave it to Weaver, and representing one of only two powered sports in. On the steel, it's easy for Timber Sports stock, stock saw to take second billing to the more powerful, unpredictable, and loud hot saw. In the stock saw event, competitors must make two cuts, 16-inch pieces as fast as possible using a powerful chainsaw that has been tuned, sharpened, and prepared by some of the finest steel technicians. Although it may look easy, none of this looks easy, the stock saw is more than just going fast. It is also one of the six disciplines on the series where times cluster very close and will provide for exciting viewing on the stock saw here. You have to be precise, you have to be on the line, and they actually look afterwards to make sure that your cuts were as precise as they want them to be, and it will affect your score if you're a little bit off the line here. And we've got uh, first heat coming up, Ben Hansen on stand number one to your left, and Tara Knudsen to your right. And you're about to hear what is it? Drivers, start your engines. There you go. The chainsaws are rolling. It is Ben Hansen versus Derek Knudsen in heat one of the stock saw discipline. Reminder that the top four competitors today will qualify for the national championship at German Fest in Milwaukee. And the sawdust is a flying. Look how close both competitors are to one another. And that's one of these competitions where it really comes down to the photo finish. It does. This is, and, and it makes sense because you're talking about stock saw, and when you think stock, that is it. They're using the same equipment. It's a uh, MS660 chainsaw, 20 inch guide bar, two loops of factory chain tuned to the same RPM and depth of cut. So, I mean, the, the differentiation here is purely the operator, and you're gonna see some really tight battles because they're using exactly the same equipment. Exactly, and uh, in real time, it looked like Ben Hansen got the victory there, as we will go to replay to see just how close these competitors are to one another as they make those cuts on their way down. I mean, they're neck and neck. This is a, uh, a horse-like photo type finish. You know, the other trick on this is that speed is can be actually kind of a, a killer for you in this situation you can bog down that saw when you're especially when you're coming up through the upcut so you have to be patient you have to let the saw do the work for you you have to let the saw do the work for you as you focus on being online they have a gentleman out there that you can see on your screen who literally went to check to make sure that the cuts were exactly where they needed to be uh, we are going to go over to our sideline reporter the man of the hour, he is Bryce Hopwood. He is with Ben Hansen. Thanks, guys. I'm with Ben Hansen, the only competitor from Wisconsin here. What does it mean to be uh, the only competitor here in your home state? Uh, one, it's nice to have a close drive. Um, but I do do like in, uh, representing the state. Uh, you know, we don't get a lot of competitions in Wisconsin, other than the world championships up in Hayward, which is also fun to represent up there. But it's cool to have at least one guy from Wisconsin. I love it, I love it. The man is from Hayward. Guys, we're gonna send it back to you in the Play in Wisconsin booth, thanks. Wanna remind everyone, and thanks so much for that great interview once again, Bryce, wanna remind everyone to like facebook.com slash Wisco Radio. Also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Wisco Radio using probably the coolest hashtag that you see all day, Wisco Hot Saw. That's hashtag Wisco Hot Saw. 
I see a lot of people out here in the crowd today. They're, they're tweeting at the hashtag, rooting on their favorite lumberjack in the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. Uh, Adam, your thoughts so far uh, on just the way things are going today? You know, I thought that uh, Matt Coger made a good point about the, the springboard chop being a really interesting way to start this out and get the adrenaline flowing. And you kind of get into your rhythm a little bit more. That one's sort of a jolt. Uh, so I, I think I've been pretty impressed so far. These guys have played it pretty equal to date. So Cassidy Shear versus Jason Lentz. Cassidy in the green shirt to the left of your screen. Jason in the blue to the right of your screen are about to participate in the stock saw heat number two. Jason Lentz and Cassidy Shear. Gentlemen, it is almost time to start your engines. It's always very cool to see the Wisconsin guy. Wisconsin guy like Ben Hansen get the victory at, on the on the home turf, if you will. Absolutely. And From Haywood, Haywood, Wisconsin, attended University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, uh, and one of the national champions there in recent years as well. Yeah, you look a little bit about Jason Lentz there, just kind of sizing up his cut in advance. You have to think through what you're doing, what your game plan is. You have to, like you said, the, these aren't these guys weren't able to, you know, soup up their chainsaws and and know them. These are all tuned to the exact same specifications by the teams here. So it's essentially using a new object. It's not something you're very very familiar with. So you got to make sure you stay online. As uh, that guy might have the job of the day, making sure that the cuts are cuts are on point here. As the engines are about to be revved here, and we are going to get heat number two between Cassidy Shear and Jason Lentz underway. Jason Lentz in the green to the left of your screen. Or uh, that's Cassidy Shear, excuse me, Jason Lentz in the blue to the right. Yes. To start this event, both hands must be on the wood and then you follow your cue before starting your first down cut. The other element here, and you saw that with Jason Lentz, you have to get a full cut through. If you don't make it all the way through the wood and you slice off an edge, that counts against you. That's a DQ. It looks like Cassidy Shear edged out Jason Lentz here in real time. We will we will double check to make sure that all the cuts are legitimate, and uh, we'll get those checked out. But in the in heat number two, looks like Cassidy Shear edged out Jason Lentz. And uh, as we are going to go to replay here, to, uh, just to double check on everything. And yeah, you look how quickly oh. Cassidy made it through on the upcut. Yeah, on that, that upcut. That was a differentiator. You blink, and Cassidy and Jason finished neck and neck of one another. An exciting competition. It's one of those things where people and who have saws at their homes are probably watching, thinking, ah, like. I could do that. <laughs> but let's be honest. No, you cannot. <laughs> Especially not in that time as we are uh, we are looking through here to make sure that the cuts were clean. Uh, as you can see to the bottom of your screen. Oh, and there oh, we got a thumb down on he, Jason Lentz. He gave him the thumbs down. And I'm guessing you can see that on TV. There is a, there is a line that's drawn around the 16-inch uh, log there that's in blue. And if you pick up any of that color, you are DQ'd. And, and, and Jason Lentz is, uh, as you can you can kind of see on your screen here, is pleading his case to 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 the judge with the with the stock, stock saw discipline, trying to say that you know he he made the appropriate cut. So we'll be curious how this pans out. And I know we are gonna we are gonna keep moving on through th through these events. Uh, as, as we make our way throughout the day, I want to remind everyone once again to uh, to like Wisco Radio on Facebook, facebook.com slash Wisco Radio, and then on Twitter and Instagram at Wisco Radio. Use the hashtag Wisco Hot Saw when you're talking about the Steel Timber Sports 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier. Eight competitors today, four of them will qualify for the national championship competition. It's going to take place at German Fest in Milwaukee, and uh, interesting. A little bit of a uh, little bit of drama there uh, with uh, Jason Lentz trying to plead his case for his chop, saying that he was he was spot on. But that's why we have judges, and it, and it just speaks to how hard 
these competitions are and goes back to like the person watching this in their living room who owns a saw can't do these things. Exactly, that is not the case. Uh, our, our next discipline coming up here is uh, the heat number three of the stock saw. It's gonna be Matt Koger versus Mike Sullivan. Matt Koger versus Mike Sullivan. Want to remind everyone of one of our great sponsors for today. At the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth is in fact Play in Wisconsin. How about that? Why not have the home court advantage all the time? Play in Wisconsin is your source for the largest selection of basketball hoops and play systems at the lowest prices. Superior quality your family can grow with right outside your door. Come in and try it first at Play in Wisconsin, Parmenter Street in Middleton or at playinwisconsin.com. Adam Mertz to my right, Tony Cartagena here with you in the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth. We are getting prepared for Stock Saw Discipline Heat number three. It is Mike Sullivan. You can see Mike Sullivan. He's going to be the guy in the green. We are going to have Matt Koger as the guy in the, the black. He's going to be to the left of your screen just as we get underway here. want to bring in our guy now. Bryce Hopwood, who has been doing the, the sideline interviews all day today. Bryce, what insight do you have on what just occurred here in, in the stock saw? Uh, listening over the PA, I don't know if they can hear it in the mic, so they picked it up, but they're actually going to go to a video replay and slow it down and check to see if he got the complete disc for Lentz on that last one. So we will, uh, we will leave it up to our man Bryce Hopwood working the sidelines for us here today to get more information on that. We'll get it to you as soon as possible. But video replay being used here. Uh, not often you see that, not often video replay uh, can tell the exact spot of a cut, but I'll be curious to see the result here. Yeah, that was uh, it's funny. I, maybe I jinxed him by talking about how you have to get the, through that whole 16-inch piece of wood. And and that was definitely something, the uh, the Adam Merch jinx. It's, uh, def <laughs> it's well definitely known. possible. It's well uh, I, I, I want to head over to our Weaver Auto Parts scoring update. Weaver Auto Parts, leave it to Weaver. Adam, what are the scores looking like right now? You know, as expected, Matt Koger, uh, despite him thinking that his springboard chop was not up to snuff, he won that competition eight points. We have a tie in second place there. Jason Lentz and Adam LaSalle coming in exactly equal at seven points apiece. Behind that, we have Mike Sullivan, Derek Knudsen, Richard Jordan, Cassidy Shear, and Ben Hansen. And that's why it's so impressive. You look at a guy like Adam LaSalle, who, who it looked like he was a little disappointed in his in, in, in his first event in the springboard, but com coming in at second place with seven points. And it looks like we are going to go to our instant replay to see if we can uh, see how the cut was made from Jason Lentz in in the, in the stock saw heat two. Here, we're actually going to go back up. Matt Koger in black, Mike Sullivan in green. Heat number three of the stock saw coming up. Remember, both hands have to be on the wood to start the competition. Sullivan making his first cut. He's on his way back up, as is Koger. Going to be another close finish, and it looks like Koger comes in right under the 10-second mark. That's unofficial, of course. We'll get the official times later on, but it looks like Matt Koger is continuing to dominate this event as it appears he edged out Mike Sullivan in the third heat of the stock saw. It looked like Ko Koger came in. Let's check out the replay here with you. Koger just making what looks to be just a textbook cut back up the back up the log here, finishing in just under 10 seconds. And you look how uh, how even his cuts were as well. I mean, he's he's down to probably a quarter inch apart on the width of those uh, discs that he's dropping. Yeah, I don't believe there will be any controversy on this one, but we've been surprised in the past, so we'll see what happens as our judge is currently looking. If you see on the left of your screen, our judge is right now looking at Matt Koger's Matt Koger's log there to see how the cuts were. Um, as we get a thing, as we get set up for that, uh, we will in a minute be joined by Matt Koger, who, who seems to be very confident in his last cut. Bryce Hopwood, man of the hour, with winner Matt Koger. Thanks, guys. Matt, you know, you said your first springboard wasn't quite enough. 
But uh, you see it here at first after the first point. So how do you feel, especially after going out in your second heat and finishing that one out? Yeah, the springboard, uh, you know, I said it was rough. I mean, it was rough as far as, like, cutting clean, but I guess it was good enough for the win. So that was great, getting the points from that. And now I got some good points out of the stock saw. I think I'll uh, should be somewhere in contention with that. So we'll see where we end up with the stock saw. It's just the best that you can do. Listen to the RPMs, try to make the best cut and then see where you fall in the monks everybody else. Everybody else has got to make the same cut. Perfect, perfect. You look good out there. Keep it up. It's hot. Thanks, man. Try to stay hydrated. No problem. Good work. Guys, back to you. Thanks for that, Bryce. He'll provide the updates. In a little bit, we're going to have to start asking these guys how much the heat is going to affect some of their performances because it is, what are we looking at, 87 degrees right now out here? Bring you a little bit inside the Plain Wisconsin broadcast booth. My phone overheated. <laughs> Talk about that. There's a good indicator right there. I kid you not, that's how hot it is. I looked at the screen of my iPhone, and it said temperature needs to cool down before you can use again. That's how hot it is today. Uh, hopefully these athletes are a little more hydrated and working a little better uh, than my phone is. But it's uh, been an exciting, exciting day so far. We're about to finish the second discipline of the day. That's the stock saw. We got one more heat. Of that coming up, that is Adam LaSalle against Richard Jordan. Adam LaSalle and Richard Jordan in the fourth heat of the stock saw. That's coming up momentarily. I know we are gonna we are still working on efforting a uh, a ruling on Jason Lentz and his hop saw that was uh gave given the thumbs down by our on stage judge here this afternoon. So we'll get an update from that from our man Bryce who's working the sidelines for us today. As these guys are just getting ready, Adam LaSalle and Richard Jordan. Gentlemen, the engines have been started. Once again, a reminder that the saw has to be on the ground and both hands have to be on the wood before the event can get underway here. As they are sawing through, Both competitors on the upcut now. We got a really nice cut there by Mr. Richard Jordan. Yeah, Richard Jordan got the thumbs up. I look the thumbs up from the judge. That's how precise those guys were. The thumbs up came with absolutely no problem, no questions. As we go to replays, you see one of the one of the very very clean cuts of the day here. Yeah, and you look at Richard there, uh, you're know, getting into the technique, leading with his elbow a lot, really pulling up and yanking that thing through. Uh, we are efforting chatting with Richard Jordan to talk about his victory in the stock saw, heat number four. We will continue to provide, now that we have two disciplines completed today, we will continue to provide updates on our Weaver Auto Parts scoreboard. Uh, that'll be coming up probably right after the break, courtesy of our friends at Weaver. Leave it to Weaver. Our next discipline today will be the standing block. We'll get to that after the commercial break. Right now, we are going to we are we are going to send it on over to our man Bryce Hopwood, who just chatted with Richard Jordan after finishing the stock saw. Uh, Richard Jordan said that it went well. He had a quick time, so he's looking to get the points out of that one. It looked like he had one of the quicker times. Also got an official ruling on the Jason Lentz situation. It was a DQ on that cut, so that's what we have uh, coming and got that situation figured out. We will have an update, including the disqualification, on the Weaver scoreboard. That'll be coming up right after the break. Uh, coming up next after the break, we have more steel timber sports action for you, including the standing block, single buck, underhand chop, and the hot saw. More action to come live from the Midwest Qualifier in Mount Horeb from the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth. We'll be right back.
out why steel is number one in America at SteelUSA.com. Snacking has never been this exciting. At Graze.com, we combine wholesome ingredients with the flavors we all love to create over 100 exciting snacks, like these. We'd love to send you a Graze sampler box for free. Just go to Graze.com, enter the code ENJOY24, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. Join thousands of Grazers already in love with our exciting snacks. So come to Graze.com for your first box free. In these troubled times, wouldn't you feel safer being able to quickly access the gold in your gold-backed IRA rather than having it locked up in some undisclosed depository someplace? Introducing the Home Storage Gold IRA from Capital Gold Group. Now you can unlock your gold with a Home Storage Gold IRA and keep it in your home safe or a safe deposit box, someplace you have quick access to. The Home Storage Gold IRA has all the benefits of other gold-backed IRAs without giving up your right to store your gold. So the question is, do you want control of your gold IRA or not? Call now for your free Home Storage Gold IRA brochure. Call in the next 15 minutes and Capital Gold Group will give you a safe to store your gold. Call Capital Gold Group now at 800-518-3927. That's 800-518-3927. Call now. Welcome back to beautiful Grundle Park in Mount Horb, Wisconsin. On a fantastic day, a little bit of breeze, a little bit of sunshine, a lot of sweat and athleticism here at the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. We are two disciplines down and four to go. Adam Murchison alongside me. I'm Tony Cartagena, broadcasting for my first ever Steel Timber Sports. And I have to tell you, I am thoroughly, thoroughly entertained here as we are getting over to, uh, to the chop block. So the standing chop block, to the casual observer, the standing chop block may resemble baseball. It involves swinging a razor sharp ax at a white pine chopping block. Successfully cutting a standing block is more than just smashing a log with maximum horsepower. Care must be taken to present the ax with a slope that allows the ax to cut the wood fibers and slice into the block. In the standing block chop, contestants look to cut approximately halfway through the log on the front using the pattern of drives and chips to lift out chips of wood and allow the ax to cut deeper into the log, just like other chopping events, naturally. They will then set a final series of powerful drives directed upwards before running to the other side of the log and repeating the pattern of drives and chips on the back side of the block. It looks like we're going to have three competitors at a time here. Uh, for the standing block. As we... Yeah, uh, just just two for now, Tony. Just, just two up, for yep. now. Yep, that's, that is that is the novice Timber Sports announcer <laughs> in me. I apologize for that. The first heat is going to be Adam LaSalle against Ben Hansen. Adam LaSalle on the right of your screen. Ben Hansen on the left of the screen. This is the standing block discipline. Oh, and Adam LaSalle was mid-swing ready. ready. He hit right on go. This is like, uh, you know, Clay Matthews timing the snap, <laughs> ready to burst through. There didn't appear to be a flag on the field, there so I think no we're flag. good. Adam LaSalle is chopping with just absolute raw power. As you can see these guys, watch the wood fly off of the log when they chop through there. That is not an easy thing to do. They are ripping through this wood. You know, this is the event that has the kind of the, the most traditional, and you look at Adam LaSalle finishing quickly, uh, kind of the most traditional chopping. It's a standing up, they're really able to get themselves behind that, get some momentum and really slam into that piece of wood. Yeah, and it looked like Adam LaSalle finished uh, edged out Ben Hansen right there will go to replay to double check everything, but Adam LaSalle chopping away ferociously to finish the standing block discipline. And Adam LaSalle. Adam's gotta be really happy with that with that round, especially coming off uh, that first, use the, the springboard chop, he had such a rough start to the day. This is his chance to get back into it. And just a quick update on 
the Hellwig Auto scoring updates. Hellwig Auto Clinic, expert technical knowledge with speedy on the spot service. Matt Cober, Matt Coger was the stock saw winner with a time just over 11 seconds. Uh, and, but while we work on uh, more scoreboard updates, we will kick it over to the man of the hour. He's Bryce Hopwood, and he is with Adam LaSalle. Thanks, guys. I'm with Adam LaSalle. Adam, you know, it's hot out here. It's a little windy to kind of cool that down, but in this, the raw power that comes in the uh, event here, does that affect you and how many swings you, you decide to get in or how hard? No, you generally go at it with a plan, and then you try to kind of adapt as the wood uh, uh, opens up and you can read it a lot better. I mean, the, the elements are what they are. It's hot, so you still got to give it uh, give it all, your all every time, but makes it a little bit taxing at the end of the day. But Yeah, most definitely. You look good out there. You got off to a quick start. Is that, is that uh, good? Is just that how the wood was falling, or what, what can you kind of chalk that up to? Uh, I, think, I think my axe was cutting a little bit better in that block than it was at, for the springboard. Uh, it was a little bit uh, stiffer in the front, but by the time I got to the back, I figured it out. Perfect. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. And now we're going to send it back to Tony and Adam in the Plain Wisconsin booth. Thanks so much, Bryce. As I said right before we kicked it over to that great interview, we did have uh, a result. It was uh, Matt Coger winning the Stock Saw event. And once again, today's event, one of our many great sponsors, Hellwig Auto. Hellwig Auto Clinic provides quality auto repair services by skilled and certified professionals. We offer automotive repairs, tire and wheel, and service, and used car sales to customers across southwest Wisconsin. At Hellwig Auto Clinic, you can expect knowledgeable, certified technicians, and speedy on-the-spot service. At Hellwig, we've been supporting the community for over 15 years, and we'd like to thank you, family, friends, and community, for all of the support. Like Hellwig Auto on Facebook, or call 608-437-5112 to schedule an appointment today. Heat number two of the standing block, block discipline. Tony Cartagena and Adam Merch from the Plain Wisconsin broadcast booth. Derek Knutson versus Richard Jordan. And they are off. Derek Knutson against Richard Jordan. This is heat number two. Richard Jordan on the right of your screen. Derek Knutson on the left of your screen. And Richard Jordan's had a really strong start through the first two events today. See if he can keep that up. These guys are going blow for blow like a heavyweight fight, and Derek Knudsen chops through first. Derek Knudsen chopping through Richard Jordan, two or three strikes away. But Derek Knudsen once again victorious in his heat. This was the second heat of the standing block discipline, as uh, I believe we will go uh, shortly to replay over here to see Knutson chop. And there is Knutson just worked his way through. It's interesting for these guys, you know, depending if you're righty or lefty, what side you start on, but then you also, you know, once you get halfway through, you have to run around to the other side and continue chopping. So, you know, it's all about practice. And this is essentially too, Adam, is one of those things like, they did on top of the springboard challenge where they were you know chopping through 11 inches of white pine doing the same thing here it's a little bit different of a chop and everything as uh, i believe we are actually going to be joined by derek knutson uh, who's gracious enough he's bringing two axes with him did mm. want derek to know i'm a good friend of his and no no reason to use those axes uh, while he's doing the interview here with our man bryce hopwood here on the sidelines we'll kick it over to bryce and the the victor Derek Knudsen. Thanks, guys. I'm with Derek, and I actually, on the way over, asked about bringing the two axes in behind you. You want to give me that explanation one more time? Yeah, I always bring up an extra axe, especially in the, the steel series here. You got to get points, and uh, it doesn't happen a lot, but you can break an axe handle or run into a knot and ruin the edge on one axe. So I try to position it to where I can grab it from either side. You know, you look good. You only needed one for that last one. You got some big blows in right away. You turned around and went right back to it. Was, uh, was it just a good feel for the wood on that one? Uh, yeah, I, I picked a good ax. I got one ax that's really liking this wood a lot. Uh, it's a little bit dry wood, but uh, that ax seems to be cutting pretty well. So happy with that one. Thanks, sir, and go enjoy your break here before the next uh, event. Thank you. Guys, back to you in the Plain Wisconsin broadcast booth. Thanks so much, Bryce. Just doing a tremendous job with interviews today, all day, talking all all of the winners and getting info, you know, from the stock saw competition as well. Uh, as we move on, Heat Three is set to begin here shortly. That's going to be Cassidy Shear 
and Mike Sullivan and uh, that that banging that you hear in the background, that metal sound, that is the guys just setting up. They have to basically fasten these logs onto these holders because the amount of force that they're chopping it with, one good strike, you can knock it out of there like a home run ball. You saw it, uh, Derek Knutson, I saw that a little bit toward the end. I mean, that thing is is uh, getting a lot of force applied to it. And it's not like the stand is wobbling, but that wood is moving a lot. Uh, Adam, I believe you have a scoring update provided from Helwig Auto for us. That's right. Uh, take a peek where we stand on the Lord leaderboard, brought to you by Helwig Auto Clinic. Helwig Auto Clinic, expert technical knowledge with speedy on-the-spot service. This is through two events. Matt Koger is leading with 16 points. Richard Jordan coming up with 11. Mike Sullivan, nine. Cassidy Shear, eight. Those are the top four. Those are in position right now to move on. Obviously, four events left. Behind them, we've got Ben Hansen, Adam LaSalle, Derek Knudsen. And our, our next heat coming up, the standing block discipline. It looks like we're going to have Cassidy Shear and Mike Sullivan. Cassidy Shear and Mike Sullivan here in, in heat number three of the standing block discipline. It's fun being, you know, where, where the broadcast is set up, and, and you don't get a lot of this on the television version, but we can see some of the competitors in these, in these I'm just going to call them athletes, not competitors. We see these athletes standing, you know, backstage, preparing their tools, preparing themselves for each individual discipline. And it's quite exciting because there's a lot more that goes into this than, you know, grabbing a rusty axe out of the garage and chopping some wood. Yeah, we've got, uh, you know, Matt Koger right here putting a little lubricant onto his saw and keep that thing, onto his uh, um, axe, excuse me, and keeping that thing ready for competition. There's Cassidy Shear versus Mike Sullivan here. But once again, these are all timed events where you are basically going to get seven other competitors. You're not just the person you're matched up with in your individual heat, something very important to remember. Another you know, aspect of this event is that you know, a lot of these, you'll see them out there with chaps on and whatnot preventing it. This one's pretty much just the safety pants and a, and a t-shirt or tank top. And it looks like Cassidy Shear comes out on top, Mike Sullivan. Couple more chops took him to break through his wood there, but a valiant effort by both Cassidy Shear, who comes out on top there, and Mike Sullivan. And we'll kick it over to the replay as we see Cassidy Shear kind of just working his way after running around to that backside and chops right through. And it has to be a great feeling when you when you finally break through and knock that wood apart. You know, and uh, Cassidy, as uh, as he mentioned before, as we mentioned before, he's essentially a rookie at this, at the chopping disciplines. He was a guy who came up through speed climbing and uh, log rolling. So uh, really impressive event for him in that respect. I got to remind everyone about our friends over at Hellwig Auto Clinic, providing quality auto repair services by skilled and certified professionals. Hellwig Auto is providing our scoring updates on the day. Matt Koger, 16 points. Richard Sullivan, 11. Uh, Richard Jordan, excuse me, 11. Mike Sullivan with nine. Uh, Cassidy Shear, eight points. Ben Hansen and Jason Lentz are tied with seven. Lentz had that DQ in the stock saw. Adam LaSalle with six and Derek Knutson, five points. Matt Koger, the defending national champ with a five point early lead. And once again, that uh, scoring update brought to you by our friends over at Hellwig Auto. As we get prepared for our final heat in the standing block discipline, it will feature the man leading the competition with 16 points. That is Matt Koger. He'll be going against Jason Lentz. And uh, I'm excited for this one because Koger's a guy who obviously has the lead and has been doing extremely well defending national champ. And Jason Lentz caught, uh, caught the DQ in the last, in the, in the stock saw. So he has some ground to make up here. So he may try to hit the home run out of the park and just, you know, chop through on one try. But uh, I don't know how possible <laughs> that is. But uh, two two great competitors, two great competitors here. Excited to see what they have to offer. It's a really tough break for Jason Lance because he was second in the springboard chop, started strong, and uh, you know as I mentioned before, this is a, uh, with six events, you can come back from an early deficit, and the key mm -hmm. is to be steady and make sure that you're just not having any kind of zeros or ones on the board. He's got one, so he's got a rebound all the way. And Jason Lentz is in the blue on the left of your screen. Matt Koger in the black on the right of your screen as they are chopping away. Koger just an absolute beast at the standing block. Says it's one of his favorite events. 
and Matt wow. Koger is see through. Why. And Lentz through just a couple seconds after. I don't even think I counted 20 chops. Man, you know, I was looking at the size of the chunks of wood that both of these guys are bringing off. I would feed your fire pit for a week and a half, Adam. <laughs> I got to bring these guys over after. <laughs> Adam's actually been walking around collecting the wood that has been chopped away, uh, and he's uh, going to take it home. But in all seriousness, one of the cool things they do here is some of the wood blocks and some of the discs that get cut, they then spray paint the steel logo on it, and they give it to a fan in the crowd. Yeah, and, and I saw that last year, and you look at the reaction on a lot of these kids' faces when they're getting this 16-inch you know, round piece of wood, and it's it's a pretty nice memento to bring home from a sunny afternoon in Mount Horeb. We'll kick it to our sideline reporter. It's Bryce Hopwood with, with the current leader of this competition, Matt Koger. Thanks, guys. I'm with Matt. Matt, you seem to slice through that thing like, like butter. What, what, what came through on that one for you? Uh, definitely the X. Uh, yeah, with this kind of particular wood, it was a little drier. you got to have the right X to suit that log, and... I think I picked the right axe for today, and no, I just went to, went together beautiful. I opened it up. I was planning on actually going 10, and I was just like, well, I think I can get by with 7, and went 7, and it, it fell off in the back. So sometimes plans work out like that way. Sometimes they don't, but I'm glad it did. And working out for you halfway through, you're still up in the lead. So continue having a great day, guys, and now I'm going to send it back to the guys in the booth. Thanks. Thanks. Three events in, three events to go. It is the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. Coming up after the break, we'll have the single buck chop and more. It's Steel Timber Sports action brought to you by Wisco Radio and the Wisco Radio Media and the Wisco Media Group. Excuse me. We'll be right back from Grundle Park in Mount Horror, Wisconsin. to send you a Graze sampler box for free. Just go to graze.com, enter the code ENJOY24, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. Join thousands of grazers already in love with our exciting snacks. So come to graze.com for your first box free. Steel. German engineering. American manufacturing. Servicing dealers. And people across America who refuse to compromise. Real people, steel people. Join us. The good news is they're running a little bit behind our schedule in terms of the competition, so. And, w and welcome back to Grundle Park in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. This is the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. Adam Mertz and Tony Cartagena with you today. We're three events in, three disciplines to go. And as we look across the board, we have Matt Koger as our current leader on the day. We just got to chat with him after he finished up in the, in the stock saw. So we have uh, three... Three, th three events to go. We have uh, Discipline 4 coming up right here. That's going to be the single buck discipline. And uh, as you can see on your TV screen, they're just preparing so many wood chunks and things to go around that they, uh, they have to prepare uh, between each and every one. But as we look ahead to the single buck, an exciting event, but one of the th one of the events that uh, I don't think a ton of the competitors consider it to be their best event. So I'm curious to see. I was talking to some of the guys before things got underway today, and some guys really excel, like at the Springboard Challenge or one of those. And uh, this is the one that uh, guys who are at the bottom of the pack here, it was, as we look at the Weaver the Weaver scoring update, guys at the bottom of the pack can actually make up some make up some ground here because there aren't people who are just super dominant at this, at least in their humble opinion. I, I have a good feeling that some of these guys are going to blow through this, but they may not consider it their, their best, best sport. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of an old school event that uh, you'll see when you think of the two lumberjacks sawing back and forth with the long saw. That's what the, that's what the single buck will look like with just one competitor. As things are, things are set to get underway here. Live from the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier at 
Grundle Park in Mount Horror, Wisconsin. Like I said before, three events in, three disciplines to go. And we'll be right back after the break. This is the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier of the Steel Timber Sports. And welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. A beautiful day in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. We are live from Grundle Park for the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. Eight competitors here today. Four of them will qualify for the chance to compete at the National Championships at German Fest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Adam Mertz to my right, Tony Cartagena with you. Very excited, very excited to be here today for the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier. Uh, as we look at the events that we have coming up, it's the Single Buck Saw. The Single Buck Saw is the event that we are moments away from. Currently leading the event is defending champion Matt Koger. And after wailing away at logs for years with a single sharpened piece of steel at the end of a stick, Lumberjacks wised up technology improved and the simple axe gave way to the immensely more complex single buck saw. These saws used in competition feature single sharp edges giving way of a series of small sharpened teeth on a roughly six foot long 15 to 18 pound piece of steel affectionately known as the misery whip. There's very little that is miserable about modern single buck saws as our single buck competition is about to get underway here from the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. I want to remind everybody, facebook.com slash Wisco Radio, like us there. Also, on Twitter and on Instagram at Wisco Radio. But more importantly, when using those social media outlets, throw up the world's greatest hashtag, Wisco Hot Saw. That is hashtag Wisco Hot Saw. Get linked up with photos and updates and scoreboard updates from the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. And I keep reiterating that this is a qualifier, Adam, because the, out of the eight competitors today, four of them will qualify to compete for the chance at national glory. That will be at German Fest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Matt Koger, who's competing here today, already has been there, done that, won that, and now he's looking to defend his throne. He's off to a hot start this afternoon, but we are looking at four guys qualifying for the Milwaukee U Championships. It's been a, a really good competition here. I think that you're gonna see some stuff today on TV that, uh, you know, if you're new to timber sports, might surprise you a little bit. You're thinking about, these are big guys that are swinging, but they're also very athletic, and you'll see that in a lot of what they do in terms of core strength and, and balance and uh, just their overall discipline. It's a technique-driven sport. And we are gonna go ahead to our Weaver Auto Parts scoring update at Leave It to Weaver, the Weaver Auto Parts scoring update. And Matt Koger has the lead at 24 points. He's followed by Richard Jordan with 14. Cassidy Shear and Jason Lentz also with 14. Impressive for Jason Lentz to have the 14 points because he was disqualified from one of the three events earlier today for a not so clean cut, so credit him bouncing back up in a three-way tie for second place, followed by Mike Sullivan with 13, Derek Knudsen with 12 points, Adam LaSalle with nine, and Ben Hansen eight points. But as expected, Matt the Beast Koger, 24 points, defending the national champion. Uh, we've got to talk to him a few times today. Even when he finished in first place, he wasn't necessarily thrilled with, his, uh, with the results of his first springboard event. And uh, that's credit to him. The best athletes in the world uh, always 
are going to be critical of their performances, even when you get a W. So uh, you like to see that in an event like this. He's definitely, everyone knew it coming in, that he's pretty head and shoulders above the field in terms of if he performs to his ability. He was not very happy with his uh, first event today, the uh, springboard shop, but has really responded well and, and shown uh, why he is considered the favorite coming into this event. Yes, and as, uh, as we are getting underway here. Our first heat in the single buck discipline is going to be Jason Lentz, who is, like I said, in second place in a three-way tie for second place with 14 points. And Matt Koger, Matt Koger, who has 24 points on the day. Before we get this heat underway, I want to remind everyone about MHTC, residents from Mount Hora, Blue Mounds, and Dodgeville. Count on MHTC for high quality, affordable, high speed internet. Visit MHTC.net or call 608-437-5551. MHTC, world-class technology with hometown values. Their high-speed wireless internet service is available to residents in Barneveld, Hollandale, Mineral Point, and Dodgeville. Once again, MHTC.net. And here we are with our uh, first heat coming up. Jason Lentz and Matt Coger. Excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself on that one. With Ben Hansen and Richard Jordan coming up. Yes, Ben Hansen and Richard Jordan in this heat. I was going to say, Matt uh, Matt Coger finished up the last event. I didn't want him to have Give to get a little bit of a break. <laughs> yeah. huh? as things are starting to get underway here. A little bit of a break in the action because they want to make sure each piece of wood is extremely precise and everything will be equal amongst all competitors. Same thing that they do with the with the saws as well. They're all finely tuned to certain specifications and no one has uh, access to them beforehand. It's all done professionally. So they're all cutting the same wood, the exact same wood with the exact same saw. You know, I've heard several competitors mention today how dry the wood is, which is not a surprise given the conditions this week. Uh, you know, wood, like anything else, will breathe. And it's been a very dry, warm week in this area. A very dry, warm week as these guys are working their way through in this single buck competition, this single buck discipline. Looks like one of the harder competitions out there as you have to saw through just a massive piece of wood there. Richard Jordan coming through with another solid performance today. Keep an eye here as well as we have the judge on stage who judges and, and, and examines just how the cut was because the cut can't be diagonal, it can't be sloppy, the cut has to be spot on and, and they want to make sure everyone is, uh, is cutting to those specifications. So we go back to the replay as we look at Richard Jordan coming through in the clutch here, cutting through and creating that disc. Hey, look at the size of the teeth on those single buck saws. That's a, that's a lot of motion coming through. And these it's, things, a, it's a shark, essentially. <laughs> it's, it's, right. Yeah, they're basically cutting with shark teeth out there. It's pretty, pretty unbelievable, rather impressive that these guys are able to compete at such a high level and do these things that I think some people take for granted how hard it is to, to cut, do things like cut through uh, massive pieces of wood. And that's 15 to 18 pounds of yes. steel that's hanging out there. And those are six feet long. That's a lot of steel to maintain. And we are going to kick it on over to our man, Bryce Hopwood. He is being joined by Richard Jordan, who won the first heat of the single buck discipline. Hey, thanks, guys. I'm here with Richard Jordan, as you mentioned. You know, Rich, I noticed your opponent, uh, Ben, there was just a little taller than you. Does that play into anything with uh, him being a little taller, you being a little shorter? Does that really make a difference? Advantage. He has a big advantage. Being that the wood is at a certain height, it's much easier if you can get on top of the wood because I'm short and you can't get on top of the wood. Well, it was impressive, though, that you then beat him at there and, and you cut through pretty quickly. Thank you. No problem. We're going to send it back to Tony and Adam. Thanks, Rich. Heat number two coming up here in just a second is going to be Cassidy Shear and Derek Knutson. Uh, big thanks to Bryce Hopwood chatting with Richard Jordan, the winner of Heat 1 there. Got to remind everyone about Richie Implement in Cobb, Darlington, and Barneveld. They've been there for over 50 years and is your steel headquarters in the southwest Wisconsin area. 
Richie's is family owned and operated, which means they are big enough to serve you and small enough to know you and your equipment needs. Stop in today and check out the complete steel line at Richie's. Visit Richie'sInc.com. That's Richie'sInc.com, located in Cobb, Darlington, and Barneville, and they have been for over 50 years. Big shout out to them for sponsoring today's event, making this great uh, competition possible. Adam Mertzen alongside me. I'm Tony Cartagena. We are live from the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Series Midwest Regional Qualifier. Out of the eight competitors today, four of them will qualify for the national championship competition that will take place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin as part of German Fest. And that's the kind of the big stage that all these guys are pointed to. There's four regionals across the U.S., mm -hmm. eight competitors in each. They have to work hard even to get a seating to get into those regionals. And uh, a lot of these competitors are not from the Midwest. Uh, the regional is just the location. It's not where they're housed in. What they do is they try to almost seed the field nationally so that there's uh, some parity throughout the region. So okay. you're facing competition that's not going to be a loaded field and kind of prevent you from getting through. We have competitors from West Virginia, Connecticut today, uh, Minnesota, and obviously Wisconsin. Yeah, we do have the one Wisconsin competitor, a lot of, you know, some East Coast guys, like you said, and the Connecticut, the West Virginias, and all guys that are doing what they love to do. And two of those guys coming up next, Cassidy Shear and Derek Knutson. Derek Knutson has been having a great performance today. Cassidy Shear definitely impressed in the last event of the standing block discipline. So we'll see if that momentum can carry over into the single buck discipline as the single buck is set to get underway. Richard Jordan winning the first heat. Derek Knutson getting getting underway here. It's interesting to watch underneath as they uh, as they are nailing what are essentially blocks onto the platform. Uh, if you're familiar with track and field, it's essentially, you know, you could basically kick off the blocks. You want the, the sawers here, our, our athletes, to uh, to be able to have solid footing when they are when they are making these cuts and and trying to saw through this 15 pounds worth of worth of wood here. So I think it's cool. You got to have have your feet down the same way a, a sprinter uh, like myself used to be. You have to you know your blocks have to be in the right place. Otherwise you know you slip out of them or anything. You have bad footwork. You can have a bad race. So uh, you can notice that on your screen a little bit as they as they zoom in on the blocks there. Yeah, uh, just getting these athletes uh, athletes set up. This event is about leverage, as you'll see. That's a six feet. You try. You, they call this the misery whip back in the day, and that's more based on the technology at the time, where the uh, metal was, the steel was a little more pliable, and it could flap around a little bit. These are really well built saws, and it's more a matter of just technique at this point, rather than getting caught up. You may see that from time to time in this event. And I believe that happened last year, where someone essentially got stuck and had to come up and start fresh. But these teeth, as you mentioned, are like shark teeth almost out there. They cut through about anything. Knutson to your right. We have Cassidy Shear to your left. Cassidy wearing the green shirt. Knutson in the black cutoff. As, uh, as they're also throwing some uh, some WD-40 on the saw as well. And just making sure that they're in prime condition to, uh, to saw through this. You know, and the, the logs being dry, as we mentioned before, basically that's what the problem is there. You're gonna get some overheating on the saw. You're also not gonna get as much uh, motion through in action. There's no lubricant, natural lubricant. So you need to kind of add to the situation with some WD. Our sideline reporter, Bryce, you know, talking about the, uh, the height differential here too in this event where, you know, it's the, each log is at the exact same height. So if you're a little bit of a taller guy, you have an advantage because you're essentially on top instead of sawing up. And that's, that's great insight from the guys here. Cassidy Shear is kind of an outlier among these competitors in that a lot of these guys come up through um, you know, logging, uh, forestry, that sort of thing. Cassidy has a really long family history in uh, lumberjack sports, but he comes up through a different end of things, through log rolling. He's His dad was a four-time log rolling world champ. He kind of went that route, and then speed climbing, which is also seen of the you know kind of 50-foot uh, trees that you're mm -hmm. trying to get up that timber as quickly as you can. He's new to this this year. Knutson on your right, Shear on your left in green. This is the single buck discipline, and these guys are getting underway here. You can hear the metal saw just grinding through that wood in the background here. You know, and your back cut is important as your forward cut on this, as you look at how much sawdust is coming out there. And Derek Knudsen 
victorious in this heat. We await the judge, as you'll see, uh, see him come across the stage here right after we check out a replay of that final cut by Derek Knutson ripping his way in the single buck discipline. So much raw force there. There is. You look at the angle that he's coming in. You're talking about getting on top of the wood. And Derek yep. did an, obviously did a fantastic job in that respect. Just to be that tall, that strong, and to rip, rip, rip through that wood, it's uh, it's definitely incredible. And uh, as you see these the speed and things that they do that at, you don't question anymore why they you know set up their set up their blocks three or four times to make sure they're comfortable and things like that because you want to be able to 100% be in your natural element and. Uh, to be able to compete at a high level like Derek Knutson did there to win. And then with that, we send it over to Bryce Hopwood and Derek Knutson. Thanks, guys. I'm with Derek. The wind's blowing, the hair's flowing a little bit. You look good out there. You're continuing. You're strong. But I noticed uh, your shoes, you don't have spikes on the bottom like some guys do. What's the th thought process behind that? Uh, I'm running the, the foot blocks. Uh, that allows my feet to stay in place. And uh, right there before I started going, the wind was grabbing my saw and really moving it. So I didn't want to have such a long stroke. I kind of wanted to get up a little bit more and keep the saw down so the wind wasn't catching it. And it worked out good. That seemed to be a pretty good run. I ran the saw pretty smooth, so I was happy. Good, good. You look good out there. Thanks, Derek. Go enjoy the last couple disciplines. Thank Thanks. you. Guys, back to you. Derek Knutson, four disciplines done, two to go. We have two more heats here in the single buck challenge, or single buck discipline, excuse me, coming up. Jason Lynch and Matt Koger. That's Jason Lentz and Matt Koger in heat number three of the single buck challenge. Uh, before we get over uh, to heat number three, I do want to remind everyone where you can find uh, coverage of today's great event on social media. That's facebook.com slash Wisco Radio. Also on Twitter and Instagram at Wisco Radio. Use the hashtag Wisco Hot Saw. That's hashtag Wisco Hot Saw. Uh, to interact with fans and participants and everyone that's at this great event today. And uh, if you miss any of the action today, if you're watching this broadcast live, you can actually see some of the fun competition that's going to take place here at Grundle Park in Mount Horeb tomorrow afternoon. It's part of their summer frolic uh, festival that's happening right behind us. So if you hear any screams, no, no, a saw did not get loose. <laughs> it, it, there's roller coasters happening behind us and uh, and the tilt of world so make sure if you're uh, if you're watching this broadcast live definitely get out to Mount Horeb uh, Grundle Park in Mount Horeb just an absolutely beautiful venue beautiful weather beautiful people and obviously uh, some of the best athletes in the world competing at a very very high level and if you make it out Sunday there's an open competition it's not truly an open competition and that you do have to be vetted and qualified but you're going to see a lot of the the folks out here who are prepping the wood who are establishing the stage these are guys who have dreams of being on this stage on the big day at the Midwest qualifier they'll come to try to set some qualifying times and uh, make their make their case for a spot in next year's competition Jason Lentz in the blue he's to the left of your screen Matt Koger in the cutoff he's to the right of your screen this is the single buck discipline he is at emerge i'm tony cartagena in the plain wisconsin broadcast booth as they are about to start saw as you can hear them just rip through this wood all the sawdust coming out both sides and matt coger oh Wow, that's is awesome. that a photo finish, photo finish that we have? We'll we'll wait on the replay before announcing a winner here. And it looks like the early the early reports are going to be Matt Koger winning the competition or winning this heat. But either way, remember that they are going against. It's all timed. They're going against the field. So both of these competitors, I believe, just posted very very competitive times here. As uh, we look at the photo finish, I'm not so sure. I, I Ad, thought I Ad, had Jason Lance Adam, winning that one. Where we'll have to get an official ruling there. Our main man, Bryce Hopwood, hardest working man in sports today, running around this place, 87 degree heat, tracking down winners and making sure we have all the information that we, that that we need. Uh, it looks like we do have a photo finish here today. As we look, and there it is. The photo finish would appear that Jason Lentz is the winner into in, in the head-to-head -head against Matt Koger. 
uh, Jason Lentz looked like his disc was about to hit the ground and broke free first. Uh, so we'll get an official ruling on that. But either way, remember, this is a one on eight, basically, or one on seven competition as your times are added up against everyone else's. They're just doing this in the individual heats, but your times are added up and that's where you get your score from. So the photo finish looked like Lentz. The PA announcers had Koger. Either way, I believe that their times are probably top of the class here today. Uh, our, uh, our, our man Bryce will have the, uh, the results for us here in a second. If you, are get, if you are streaming your results at home, you should be streaming using MHTC. Residents from Mount Hora, Blue Mounds, and Dodgeville count on MHTC for high-quality, affordable, high-speed internet, digital TV, and phone service. High-speed wireless services available to residents in Barneveld, Hollandale, Mineral Point, and rural Dodgeville. Visit MHTC online at MHTC.net or call 608 or 437. Let me do that one again. I don't want anyone to get their phone number confused. 608 Four three seven five 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 one, mhtc.net, mhtc, world class technology with hometown values. Thanks to mhtc and all our sponsors today, including Play in Wisconsin. We're in the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth. I think Tony, maybe I'm partial, but it's the best place to be today. We're a little bit sheltered from the sun uh, on a beautiful 87 degree day. There's a good breeze for those uh, people up on the hill, but uh, today I don't, I don't need to work on my suntan. I need to focus on the action on the stage. And I'm naturally tan, so we're good. I don't need to be in the sun either, <laughs> so uh, we are we are good there. But yeah, I want to thank all of the great sponsors: Richie Implement, MHTC, Hellwig Auto, Play in Wisconsin. Uh, and, uh, you know, find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wisco Radio. Use the hashtag Wisconsin Hot Saw. Uh, Adam, by my count, we got one more heat left in the single buck discipline. That's going to be Mike Sullivan against Adam LaSalle. Mike Sullivan and Adam LaSalle. Adam, the guy we've been talking about all day, obviously competing at a very high level, but also one of the guys who really takes ownership of these events and, uh, and gets here early to set up and stays late to clean up and, and it's just one of those guys who's very, very much dedicated to his sport and uh, and dedicated to putting on a world-class event, and that's exactly what we have here today. They have the Midwest Qualifier here in Mount Horeb last year for the first time. When you're coming to a new venue, these guys don't know exactly what to expect. They've scouted it out and uh, really liked what they saw. But Adam comes here, and until you get on the site and start setting up, you don't know. He came away so impressed. He built a lot of this stage last year on site. Okay. A lot of help from members of the community and some of his fellow competitors who rode in early. And uh, I was told afterward by a lot of the competitors that this is as strong a venue as they've been in. We have kind of a natural amphitheater here in Mount Horeb. There's a hill be, uh, kind of in front of the stage leading up to the big performance and, uh, and uh, beverage tent at the Mount Horeb Summer Frolic. Lots of area for people to watch. Competitors really enjoyed the strong spectator turnout last year and, and uh, just kind of a, a wonderful natural setting for them. Well, a, you know, a lot of the times, and they'll get it this year, a German fest will be outdoors. A lot of the times those national events are indoors to prevent conditions from getting in the way. Um, so that's another element that they really like being out in these conditions. Think about it, they're outdoor guys. Well, you know you're in Wisconsin, and this is not a knock because I am a Wisconsinite. <laughs> when uh, the beer tent opens at noon and there's a line, <laughs> You, you know you're in Wisconsin. Yeah, you know you're in Wisconsin when the beer tent opens at 12 and there's a line at 11.50 waiting to get in there. <laughs> we do have now in the final heat of the single buck discipline, Mike Sullivan, Adam LaSalle. Mike Sullivan in green to the left of your screen, Adam LaSalle to the right of the black cutoff. As these guys are hacking through here. You know, and it's, a, it's kind of a balance of speed and power on this. Uh, you know, you see some guys with different techniques getting through there, taking longer, harder cuts. Other guys are kind of ripping through it. Mike Sullivan gets his way through first on the day. Sh shout out to the electrician for having our, uh, our timer there right on the screen for you. As we go to replay, this is Mike Sullivan and Adam LaSalle in the single buck discipline. All right, we're gonna we're gonna reset here in a little bit, and uh, we have four events down, two events to go. Uh, in, in a second, we we will kick it to break here. In a second, we will come back, and we will have 
full scoreboard updates and uh, hear from some of the leaders and more. Coming up after the break, the underhand chop and more from Steel Timber Sports Action from Mount Horeb. It's brought to you by Wisco Radio and Wisco Media Group. This is the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier. Let's hear it for bite, char, pop, savory flavors that won't stop. From slow roasted tastes to long lasting memories, campfire meals at Cracker Barrel. Enjoy every little thing. Kubota's Orange Opportunity Sales Event is going on now. Take on the tough jobs in a powerful Kubota Standard L Series. With the right combination of dependable horsepower and ease of operation, they're perfect for the independent property owner. Now get financing as low as 0% APR for up to 84 months. Now through June 30th, 2017. Call toll-free 1-800-794-4992 for details about cost and terms. Richie Implement, your local Kubota dealer, located in Cobb, Bonneville, and Darlington, Wisconsin. Snacking has never been this exciting. To get your own free sampler box, just go to graze.com, enter the code EAT36, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. So come to Grays.com for your first box free. He's got Adam LaSalle waiting. Welcome back. This is the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. We are live from Grundle Park in beautiful Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. We just finished up the single buck discipline. And the winner of the last heat there was our main man, Adam LaSalle, and Adam is now being joined by Bryce Hopwood, our sideline reporter. Take it away, Bryce. Said, and Adam, you just told me your saw is about six foot three, and you and I probably don't quite hit, you might hit six foot, but I'm about 5'10". Uh, how do you use the saw as an extension of yourself, or, or how do you use that? Well, the longer the saw, the, the, the longer the stroke, essentially, you have to have. Shorter saw means shorter stroke, but faster. So you can essentially get... Um, more teeth on the wood, the most amount of time with a longer saw, and it's, that translates to cutting more wood. Um, but a long saw doesn't always work for everybody, so I mean, I have uh, six foot to six three saws. I have a bunch of them, and I, I kind of rotate around in different sizes of wood. Well, you look good out there. Continue your good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Gonna send it back to Tony and Adam in the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth. Coming up, we're going to have the underhand chop. Like I said before, we are four events down, two disciplines to go. We'll be providing scoring updates all day long on the Helwig Auto Scoring Update. Now, time for the underhand chop. This Steel Timber Sports event is the one that appears the most dangerous as it requires a competitor to swing an axe fractions of an inch from his feet. The underhand chop mimics how early lumberjacks would cut fallen logs to length in the woods and is usually the first chopping discipline a competitor learns. A metal cradle holds the log horizontally with one end of the log securely, do securely into the cradle and the other end is free and will fall away when severed by the X. In competition, contestants cut roughly halfway through the log on the front side before turning on the back, chopping out some of the chops and driving the log off. The expression driving off comes from the pattern of blows used to lift chips out of each chopping face and ultimately cutting the block in half. I know that was a mouthful there. This event is dangerous. Yes. That's what you take out of all of that. These guys are cutting, like it said, just fractions of inches away from their feet. That is something that you cannot take for granted. That's great insight there from our sideline reporter, Bryce Hopwood, who uh, is getting behind the scenes. Not often do you ask what an athlete is wearing under their uniform. So very, very great insight there. But in this sport, like with shoulder pads or something in football, you know, you got to protect your business. And uh, the, the, the chain link armor that is under the pants and uh, over the feet there, that's wise because you don't want to lose a toe. No, and, and we talked before about the uh, the danger of this one. Uh, to me, it's a lot of perspective because you're you're not used to swinging at something that's underneath you. 
and uh, knowing exactly where that axe is going to come through, that's a big arc. It's not out in front, it's underneath. So you have to make, make sure that your arm is in the right spot for that delivery. As you look at the competitors on stage, talking to the judge, getting some final preparations, that's Derek Knutson on your left, and that is Ben Hansen on your right. Knutson with the longer flowing hair, as it is a windy day here in Mount Horeb, and that is... Uh, uh, ben Hansen just getting some final some final instructions from the judges here, and that time is just flying today. We are four events down, just two to go as we approach the first heat, and it looks like we are actually gonna gonna rework some things here today. Yeah, it's definitely a precision sport. Uh, you know, as we discussed with the safety aspect, there's a lot of precaution that goes into this and making sure that these logs are secured in those braces that you're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything from precision cuts, otherwise you are could be disqualified, like Jason Lentz was earlier in today's competition, or precision, you know, having your blocks down. If you're not using spike shoes, but you want to have that traction, you, what, you, you know, your blocks need to be specified. The Everything needs to be unbelievably secure here, and that's why we are uh, just working on wrapping things up and uh, making sure these guys are, are not in harm's way in any shape or form. So credit credit the safety team, credit all, everyone on site here today, making sure that uh, nothing goes awry. Well, you know, there a piece of wood landed pretty close to me earlier. I may get a sliver. But besides that, I think I'll be all right today. <laughs> Yeah, definitely tweet that out, at Wisco Radio. Throw it on Instagram, at Wisco Radio. Use the hashtag, don't forget it, Wisconsin Hot Saw or Wisco Hot Saw. Let everyone know that Adam Mertz and I are in the crossfires, basically risking our lives as these athletes are out there uh, competing for uh, bragging rights and glory at the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifiers of these steel timber sports. I think next year I might ask for a flak jacket as part of the uh, outfit. I want some of this chain link that uh, Bryce was uh, getting so much insight on. I think you should have to wear it for the rest of the broadcast. Yeah, in all seriousness, Knutson on the left, Ben Hansen on the right. They are ready to go and they are ready to start underhand chopping. You've got Knutson on your left, Hansen on your right. Let's pick your favorite and help him out here. Knutson working his way through. Hansen closest to the broadcast booth. It appears to be chopping his way through as well. Both competitors turn around, face the crowd. Like you said, they are just fractions of inches away from their feet as they are chopping away. Extremely dangerous action. And it looks like Hansen finishes first. Knutson shortly afterwards. Very, very exciting event. You're on the edge of your feet the whole time because guys are swinging axes right at their feet. And uh, it looks like we're going to have a replay here. Ben nice Hansen. by Ben Hansen, too, because he's had not maybe not the day that he's wanted so far, but he's still got a chance to make up some ground. Yeah, absolutely. In just a second, we will have the Hellwig Auto, the Hellwig Auto Clinic scoring update. Hellwig Auto Clinic, expert technical knowledge with speedy on-the-spot service. Matt Koger leading the way, but the lead has been diminished a little bit. Only a seven-point uh, hedge over on Jason Lentz. Derek Knutson has 20 points. He's in third place. We have a two-way tie for fourth with, with Mike Sullivan and Richard Jordan. Adam LaSalle, Cassidy Shear, and Richard Jordan round out the final eight. Remember, the top four competitors in today in today's event, qualify for the national championship in Milwaukee at German Fest. And we kick it over once again to Bryce with our men, Ben Hansen. And ben, your uh, opponent there, Derek, has been uh, log rolling since it's about four. Do you think that uh, going against that, or, or if you had not known that or did know that, that kind of gives him an advantage or not uh, with standing on top of the log? Or, or talk about that a little bit. Uh, Derek is, you know, he's been a competitor uh, in the chopping events for all of my career. So I've seen him chop quite a bit. And just being, you know, a log rolling through his whole life, being in that competitive atmosphere, that really gives you a, quite an edge, just being comfortable up here on stage. Does it make you feel good to know that you uh, took that heat from him by, by a second or two? Yeah, it's nice, uh, nice to be able to see that I can still swing with these guys. That's what I'm looking to do here today, just come and uh, be competitive. 
Well, you did a great job there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Continue your great day. Guys, back to you in the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth. That is Ben Hansen currently with 10 points on the day, working his way up the ranks here. He has one more discipline to go, try to add some points to that board. Matt Koger with 29 total points. Jason Lentz with 22, and that is your Hellwig auto scoring update. Uh, Jason Lentz. That DQ earlier earlier on is, it may come back to haunt him a little bit. He's only seven, seven points behind Matt Koger, the defending national champion, uh, who is uh, who's walking around not far from us and uh, looks extremely focused to try to wrap this up. Remember, the top four competitors today do qualify for the national steel timber sports championships that will be at German Fest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ben Hansen just joined us. He's from Hayward, Wisconsin. Uh, you know, as mentioned there, that there's some of these guys that are out here that have had a long family tradition, uh, dads, grandfathers, even some moms that have been involved in some of this. Uh, ben got into it in college. He's the 2013 collegiate champion. So he's got you know, so a ways to go maybe to get the experience level and get up to these guys. So I'm sure that was an encouraging heat win for him. Credit him for being out here. You got LaSalle, Adam LaSalle on your left. You got Cassidy Shear on your right. LaSalle versus Shear. And they are underway, chopping away. Just massive chunks of wood hopping off of LaSalle's block there on the far side of your screen. They both made that turn. Let's help them out. Let's help them out. Both Let's choppers in a very, very good really rhythm here. here. Adam LaSalle working his way Adam through. Shear and and it looks like Cassidy Shear. Looked like Cassidy edged him out. We'll get a final ruling on that one. It looked to me like looked to me like Cassidy Shear, but we will we will hit a quick replay get things underway. Where we're positioned, we're a little bit off, and that's why our replay has the uh, the best possible option. Yeah, it looked like Cassidy Shear to me broke through. It wasn't the cleanest breakthrough that you'd ever see in, the, in your life, but uh, it looked like he uh, edged out Adam LaSalle in that heat. Adam LaSalle has just been competing at such a high level all day long. Five events down for those guys now, one to go, and uh, just very, very impressive guys. Uh, to be surrounded by. You know, and as you mentioned, uh, a lot of the times the wood will break clean on that event, and that one didn't. Both of them just fractured and kind of hung there, so that made it difficult for us to see what was going on. Credit to Cassidy. Uh, talk about body types in this competition. He comes in, and he looks different than a lot of these guys. 6'2", 190, but he is long. Uh, you're watching his arms swing through. He uses a lot of leverage in his in his swing. Yeah, you got some of these guys out here, Matt Koger, who's you know 6'6", 245, and then you got 6'2", 190. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of both, but the one thing you can't control is how tall you are. So you know this, some of these guys are making uh, making the best of it and uh, competing at an extremely high high level. Uh, one of our great sponsors today is Hellwig Auto. Hellwig Auto Clinic provides quality auto repair services by skilled and certified professionals. We offer automotive repairs, tire and wheel service, and used car sales to customers across southwest Wisconsin. Hellwig Auto Clinic, you can expect knowledgeable, certified technicians and speedy on-the-spot service. At Hellwig, it's been supported by the community for over 15 years and would like to thank you, family, friends, and community for all the support. Like Hellwig Auto on Facebook or call 608-437 5112 to schedule an appointment today. Two more heats in the underhand chop discipline to go. Been a very exciting one so far. Coming up next, we have Richard Jordan against a Mike Su Mike Sullivan, and uh, and then will be finalized by Jason Lentz against Matt Koger, who are one and two right now. Koger with 29 points. Lentz with 22 points. We'll see if those guys, you know, get after one another, trying to uh, edge out those final couple points there, see if Jason Lentz can uh, pose an upset. But the most important thing is the top four guys today, they will qualify for the national championships in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That'll be part of German Fest. Tony, uh, now that we're kind of deep into the competition, I'm curious about your thoughts. We talked about this before. I had a chance to see this up close and personal last year for the first time, other than you know watching uh, finals on ESPN and whatnot through the years. 
What's been your impressions coming in? One of the things I look at these guys and think, you know, some people think, all right, you, you got the, the lumberjacks out here. You're thinking a bunch of big burly dudes with beards and beer guts. That's not the case whatsoever. You got guys who look like they could suit up for the Green Bay Packers out here. You also have guys who don't look like they should be able to pick up an ax and can whip it around like crazy. I mean, you got world-class athletes in a sport that definitely does not get enough attention because you can play this at the collegiate level. You can compete at the professional level. And uh, it's a family-friendly atmosphere. The whole event today is just absolutely amazing. And, uh, and, and it wouldn't be possible for us to be here today, for me to experience this firsthand for the first time without playing Wisconsin. They're the official partner and sponsor of the broadcast booth. Uh, and why not have home court advantage all, all, all the time? We got a Wisconsin athlete in, today, in today's event. He's got home court advantage. Playing Wisconsin is your source for the largest selection of basketball hoops and play systems at the lowest prices. Superior quality your family can grow with right outside your door. Come in and try it first at Play in Wisconsin on Parmenter Street in Middleton or at playnwisconsin.com. That's play the letter N, wisconsin.com. Two more heats in the underhand chop today. We got Richard Jordan going against Mike Sullivan. As these guys are approaching the, not, not the starting line, but they're approaching their perches here and to get the competition underway. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Richard Jordan on the stand to your left in the black. Mike Sullivan is standing your right in the green. Jordan the on the left, the Sullivan on your right in the green. You watch all of uh, the competitors today. They size up this log pretty well before they start out. They're coming up with a game plan, a strategy, maybe a little bit of uh, mental envisioning of where they're going to connect. Yeah, absolutely, because it's not just hacking away and making a very long line and a straight line through that in an event like this. There's V cuts, there's different techniques. You got to hit it from different ways. And Mike Sullivan edges out Richard Jordan in the underhand chop discipline. Mike Sullivan looks like he broke his log first, and we will hit the replay here in just a second. Just a really solid effort there by Mike, kind of uh, reading the wood. He saw a weakness there on that side and kept hammering, coming through over on his right. You can, over, you can overhear the PA announcer kind of just finalizing the rules there and, and definitely explaining how you, you can't just fracture. It has to be cleanly cut all the way through, and that's what Mike Sullivan was able to do there, edging out Richard Jordan in that third heat of the underhand chop discipline. One more underhand chop discipline heat to go. Coming up, that will be Jason Lentz against Matt Koger. And now with an update, our sideline reporter, it's Bryce Hopwood. Hey, thanks, Tony Adams. So I tried to get Mike over here for an interview. Uh, he said to me he's uh, actually sicker than a dog, So and, and he sounded a little rougher. So uh, he, he isn't quite feeling the best, but he had an impressive uh, underhand there. So uh, hopefully he can keep it up for the last discipline here. So that's, a, that's an interesting little tidbit. Back to you guys. How many did Jordan score in his flu, in his flu game? Looks like. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> looks like that's what we have uh, Mike Sullivan out here out here doing today. Great insight there coming from Bryce. Mike Sullivan feeling a little bit under the weather. And uh, when you're not feeling well, I don't know how you're able to compete at a high level, especially in 87 degree heat. It's not like he's hooked up to an IV backstage or anything. He is, he is grinding his way through here. And uh, right before this event gets underway, got to remind everyone about Richie Implement. It's your steel headquarters and the area's leading dealer in new and used farm equipment. ATVs, lawn and garden equipment, and snowmobiles. Check out their complete line of steel products. Visit richiesinc.com. Lentz in the blue on your left. Koger in the black cutoff on the right of your screen. Lentz with the quick turn. Koger has changed shoes from his last event. An interesting update that I probably shouldn't notice, but I did. <laughs> Wow, what a strong finish by Matt Koger. Lentz made the turn quicker, but Matt Koger comes through with some big chops. Those guys cut through wood quicker than I was able to execute a live read for Richie's. How about that? That's how quick they were. I do want to finish that, though. Richie's implement, 
conveniently located in Cobb, Darlington, and Barneveld, Wisconsin. Richie's is big enough to serve you and small enough to know you. Stop into one of their many locations and check out their complete line of steel products. They're your steel headquarters and leading dealer. Visit richiesinc.com, and now we'll go to a replay. What a fantastic heat here, two top competitors, and that was just a, a real fight to the finish. Yeah, very important for Matt to get out ahead of Jason Lentz in that one as Matt Koger is holding a seven-point lead, and uh, he is now with our Bryce Hopwood. Thanks, guys. Matt, you, you, your turn was second to Lentz's there, but you came and finished strong. What was key in that? Uh, I think what it did is just spend a little bit more time on the front. I uh, just want to make sure I had a big hole in the front of that log, and then... Uh, you know, when you get to the back, it should come off a little bit easier. And, you know, sometimes it's just the plan you got to go with or you got to go on the fly and maybe change that plan. But now I had a chance before to put the footholds in and then, you know, test a good axe and the axe worked really well. And, yeah, it's just, there's maybe a few things to work on, but that's just the that's just nature of the sport. You got to work on everything and try to perfect it. Well, you've done a good job with your plan so far, Tony and Adam. One more event, the hot saw is coming up next right here from the Midwest Qualifier in Mount Horeb. We'll get you a scoring update and more after the break. This is the Steel Timber Sports Series coming at you courtesy of Wisco Sports Radio. Kubota's Orange Opportunity Sales Event is going on now. Take on the tough jobs in a powerful Kubota Standard L-Series. With the right combination of dependable horsepower and ease of operation, they're perfect for the independent property owner. Now get financing as low as 0% APR for up to 84 months. Now through June 30th, 2017. Call toll free 1-800-794-4992 for details about cost and terms. Richie Implement, your local Kubota dealer, located in Cobb, Barneville, and Darlington, Wisconsin. Snacking has never been this exciting. To get your own free sampler box, just go to graze.com, enter the code EAT36, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. So come to graze.com for your first box free. We are steel, German engineered chainsaws and landscape products. The majority of which are made here in America by Americans. And exported to over 90 countries around the world. Find out why steel is number one in America at SteelUSA.com. Oh, you can hear the chainsaws. You can see the athletes, the beautiful sunny day here in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. It is this 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. We are five events in, one discipline to go. Tony Cartagena joined by my main man, Matt. Adam Mertz here. Adam, one event to go. How are you feeling? I am feeling excited because the hot saw is coming up next, and this is kind of the big event. We have based our hashtag off it today. You can follow us on Instagram Wisco and Twitter. Hot saw. Wisco Hot Saw. This sixth and final discipline of this event today that ends every steel timber sports contest is by far the loudest and least predictable. After running the comparatively sedate MS 661s in the stock saw, which is kind of your base event, the hot saw event throws away predictability and smooth operation, replacing it with fire breathing, chain throwing sawdust everywhere. The hot saw is a power tool created only for making three cuts in a 19 inch diameter white pine log as fast as possible. You heard the fans get a little bit louder when they announced that it's the hot saw. It's the grand finale, the granddaddy of them all, the hot saw event here. Obviously a fan favorite, talking to a few of the competitors, one of their favorite as well, not only because it's a great event, but because it symbolizes the end of, uh, at the, end of the competition, and these guys have put in, you know, we've had the easy job. We're sitting in the shade. Yes. I grabbed a cold water in the, in the commercial break. These guys are competing in 87-degree heat, dangerous conditions, they're climbing up logs seven feet in the air. They are obviously just grinding out for uh, the goal of making it to that national championship uh, competition in Milwaukee. And they are one event closer. We have one event to go. It is the hot saw. It's coming up next. And uh, the looks like the first heat here today for the hot saw is just as, as everything is getting set up on the stage. 
as we're going to start off with Cassidy Shear against Derek Knutson. It's Cassidy Shear and Derek Knutson. The, uh, the cool thing about this is the rule is on what you can attach to this. If you can carry it to the arena and it has a single cylinder, you are allowed to compete with it. You see these guys soup up these saws with uh, you know, snowmobile engines and uh, larger engines. They're talking huge horsepower on this. Uh, there, there is a chance, a larger chance, of your uh, machine killing out. That's the, that's the tough thing. These things are right on the edge of being able to work or not work. So it's, it's unpredictable, as we discussed. Very, very unpredictable, and I, I, and I believe you can hear the rev of the engine uh, in the background here. That's probably from about 120 feet away from us as well, that that engine's being revved, and you can hear that so clearly. Uh, because we can smell it here, too. Yeah, that, that is true. That is, uh, <laughs> between that and the sawdust today, uh, we, we've kind of got to experience a little bit of everything. But if you look on your screen, you can see the dividers between the two logs. That's, that's protection. Uh, hopefully this one closest to us is protection for us from not getting hit with sawdust and everything that's going to be kind of floating around here and whatnot. But, yeah, they, they definitely take precautions here for the guys to uh, to compete at a high level with all the different tools and things. Adam, run through through one more time the, the specifications for this event and what you can use to compete with it. It has a single cylinder, and you can carry it to the arena. Those are the specifications. So the saws that they're using. No other rules except single cylinder, and you have to be able to carry it to the arena. Pretty simple, right? Seems fair enough to me. I mean, a lot of creativity involved, obviously, and uh, engineering. Let's yes. say it's engineering. Yeah, and as you see, our first guy is Derek Knutson is making his way across the stage right here. Uh, it's an interesting, interesting-looking saw. Boy, you look at it, you just kind of, uh, it's got the huge exhaust pipe on that thing. Looks like he took it off about a 77 Dodge or so. <laughs> yeah, that is unbelievable. Um, and looks like the, the judge just, they you know, they have to get these things checked out backstage and then they put a the okay tag on that. So it looks like both these guys have the judge's blessing to uh, to compete with their, with their revved up saws here. And when we're talking about carrying, just to show you that that's not just something that's made up. Derek Knutson, who is a big, powerful guy, was walking with one arm way out for leverage, and he was waddling toward the stage. There is a lot of weight in those machines. Yeah, I am very curious. A few things. How these guys, do they design these themselves and what goes into that, and how heavy some of these saws are. This is the hot saw competition. It is the sixth and final discipline of the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifiers. We right now have on the stage Derek Knutson and Cassidy Shear. They're about to get underway here. I'm very excited to see these engines rev up. got here Tony three cuts they need to make in a six inch span of wood with a big machine like this there's a lot of control that's involved you very strong to control that machine and make sure that you are cutting precisely because as we've seen if you don't make the correct cut you can be disqualified from 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 the heat and these guys are gonna get their engines revved up again in a second here and get things underway That is intense. That is extremely intense. We're going to wait on a final ruling from the judges to see who, who is going to come through on the first heat there. We're going to get the replay uh, queued up right about now. Boy, the intensity of these machines, you just saw it in full force. 
Down, up, down. Look at the sawdust just spray out of there like a fire hose. It's really unbelievable. And I wonder, you know, it's got to be all these guys' preference of if you prefer a a lighter saw because you can control it better or if you can, can or if you want a heavier saw because it might go a little bit faster. Exactly. It's, a, uh, it's the give and take is the risk versus the reward there uh, for so many of these things. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's definitely, definitely impressive to see some of these guys battle through. Cassidy Shear there with the looking looking impressive. Just kind of handled that really nice, calmly and smoothly. Yeah, very, very, very much so. Um, we're going to have an update in a second here from our sideline reporter, Bryce Hopwood. And uh, we'll kick it over to him live. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Adam. I had a talk with the official score there, and as I walked past uh, Shear and uh, Knudsen both went past me, Shear's saw there was a little smaller, uh, yet he came off first. You know, uh, smaller do doesn't necessarily mean, or bigger, I should say, doesn't necessarily mean better there uh, or for more power necessarily. So as we saw with that last one, we'll see and it continue here, but uh, Shear's was a little smaller, maybe a little more maneuverable. So we'll see with the next couple of guys and how their heats go. Guys, back to you in the play in Wisconsin. Broad, uh, broadcast booth. Thanks for that update, Bryce. I believe you've been able to talk to every competitor today and every uh, after every discipline as we've had winners of all, all types of different heats and everything. Uh, if you can still hear us with the uh, when the saws are on, that's why we were a little quiet during that last one because I think the the beauty of this one is that these these created saws from these guys that you know the the true fans of this sport can can can, can really look at. Uh, it can look at and listen to the rev of that engine. I think that's extremely important uh, when we're when we're when we're broadcasting this. At the end of today's show, we are going to do something special. We are going to have you know be able to con congratulate our winners and those who who qualify for the national championship in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, our scoring updates today are brought to you by our friends at Weaver. Leave it to Weaver as we look at the scoring board. And uh, Matt Coger in first place with 37 points. Jason Lentz, 29. Derek Knutson, 22. Cassidy Shear, 21 points. We got two tied at 20. That's Adam LaSalle and Mike Sullivan. Richard Jordan, 18. And then Wisconsin native Ben Hansen with 14 points. Matt Koger once again leading the way as expected. And uh, you might want to turn your volume down, folks, because you are going to hear it. There it is. All right. The t if you can hear the PA announcer, they're talking about the recoil and things on on the engines and what makes this event so much different and uh, mu so much harder than some of the other events. It's very, very impressive what these guys are able to not only put together but control and operate for for this event, for the final discipline of the Steel Timber Sports 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier. We're just three heats away from being able to crown four people and qualify them for Milwaukee. And as you saw in that Weaver uh, update, a lot of activity bunched up at the, the bottom of that four, top four. <laughs> Sawdust is just flying everywhere. Engines are revving left and right. That's a tough break for Ben Hansen. He could not get restarted. I thought it was a little quieter. I thought it was a little quieter. It's because we only had one of the one of the saws going at a time. Relatively speaking, right? Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he set it up and he, he thought that he had it at first. He probably had to wait a minute here and he was checking over his machinery to see what was going on if he flooded it out. Wisconsin native Ben Hansen working his way through today. And it appears here that Ben Hansen's cut, even after all that, he got disqualified. He did not cut within that six inch span. 
Well, as he was telling us earlier in the broadcast, he is out here today trying to just prove that he can compete with these guys and start making a name for himself. Uh, you know, the 2013 Collegiate National Champion and, and things like that. So he is he's making his way. You have some, you know, you got a guy like Sullivan in this event who has been involved since 1985. And, and, and then you have Ben Hansen, who was in college in 2013. Uh, it really, really impressive for him just to come out here, score a couple points today, and start making a name for himself in a sport that he'll be able to play for years and years to come. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the cool thing about this, too, and I've seen it listed by some places, Warwick Hallett, who was a veteran who was here last year, who was pushing 60 years old, one of those guys that taught a lot of the younger guys and really served as a mentor for them. And that's what you kind of count on when you're a Ben Hansen and you're in this position, getting out, rubbing shoulders, helping these guys out, construct sets, pick up tips along the way, watch how they perform, how they handle this in, in, in and out every day. And that's what you come away with it. One of our great sponsors of the, of the broadcast today of Wisco Radio our friends at Play in Wisconsin, they bring you the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth, and Adam Mertz has more. Play in Wisconsin, why not have the home court advantage all the time? Play in Wisconsin is your source for the largest selection of basketball hoops and play systems at the lowest prices. Superior quality your family can grow with right outside your door. Come in and try it first at Play in Wisconsin, Parmenter Street in Middleton, or at playinwisconsin.com. Now we're going to kick it over to our man, Bryce Hopwood. He is with Adam LaSalle. Thanks, guys. I'm actually with Ben Hansen, hometown hero here. Uh, ben, what happened with that last one? Well, I knew I had to come out here and put down a fast time. Uh, being behind, I wanted to, I wanted to go fast, so I uh, didn't, uh, didn't have the saw all the way up to full RPMs when I hit the wood, and I uh, ended up killing it. So, And then uh, DQ when I, when I got her started again. You try to race this stuff, and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Hey, it's all right. Your saw is pretty impressive there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Tony, Adam, I didn't mean, or Tony, I should say, I didn't uh, I didn't mean to flip the script on you with uh, bringing Ben over no, instead of Adam. No problem. We love hearing from our Wisconsin guy, Ben Hansen, making noise in the tournament, making a name for himself in the timber sports world. We do have Heat 3 coming on up. Uh, live from the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier. We're working our way through. Right now it is the hot saw. That'll be uh, Richard Jordan and Matt Coger coming up in heat three as you saw there on the, the Weaver Auto Parts leaderboard before Matt Coger with a commanding lead. He comes in eight up. Uh, basically almost at this point, the only thing that'll keep him from claiming the Midwest region title day would be a, a DQ and a, uh, an eight point win here by Jason Lentz. So uh, he's got a commanding lead coming to this final event, but it can happen, hot saw, anything can happen. And Jason Lentz will be a part of the fourth and final heat today, making for some drama to finish out today's event. Uh, like you said, Adam, Matt Coger right now against Richard Jordan in the hot saw. Gotta feel bad for Ben Hansen who just said, you know, his, his his saw wasn't ready to hit the wood and he killed it. Uh, ended up, I, you know, when you're up there and you're probably extremely frustrated from your saw kind of dying out on you, you have to, you know, take the chance to just take your time and get through the event and unfortunately for Ben, but like we said, he's young and he's gonna be around to compete in this event for many years to come. Yeah, they're handing them out left and right. They they spray the steel logo on there and the black spray paint, which has become a trademark of all the logs that they are they are cutting uh, throughout the competition and will be uh, at the national championships in Milwaukee and everything. So yeah, just a very very cool thing. One of the one of the reasons why events like this are so family friendly and like I've been saying all show. If you're listening to the live broadcast, make sure to get out to Grundle Park in Mount Horeb tomorrow for the fun competition. Uh, you'll be seeing all these same great athletes and and others who are trying to get spots in this event next year. And yeah, we've got a very nice crowd out here today at Mount Horb at the Summer Frolic, which is the, uh, there's a carnival uh, midway right behind us. You may hear some of that background noise here. 
Also, uh, a shout out here to our tremendous PA announcers who really do a great job with the crowd. Sam and Adrian are uh, veterans on this, and they came over and share some of their wisdom before our broadcast today, which we really appreciate as relative newbies to this scene. Yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, as we've said earlier in the show, this is definitely my first Timber Sports event, but hopefully not the last, because this is definitely a very, very cool experience. Couldn't ask for a nicer day, a nicer group of people, and a nicer event. Shout out to everyone over at Steel Timber Sports and all of the great sponsors who helped make this possible for uh, for Wisco Radio, including, you know, Richie Implement, Play in Wisconsin, Weaver, Hellwig Auto, the whole team across the board making this uh, making this event a possibility today. We are down to the final two heats of the final event. It's going to be Matt Koger lined up with Richard Jordan here momentarily, and then we'll finish with Jason Lentz and Mike Sullivan in the hot saw. And we'll mention we'll be coming back with highlights from some of our earlier events that uh, some of our viewers might want to get caught up on, so stick with us throughout uh, throughout the day until 4 p.m. Yes, absolutely. We'll be broadcasting live here at Grundle Park till 4. Come on out, as Adam said. You know, they got the uh, the summer frolic. They got the beer tent, which I made the joke earlier. Only in Wisconsin is the beer tent open at noon, and there's a line at 11.50. So they got that going for us, and it's just an absolutely family-friendly, fun event today. Uh, and I hope draws big numbers for the, for the city of Mount Horrible. I know that it's been uh, very well received in town, and as we discussed before, the competitors have enjoyed this venue a lot. You're in a bit of a natural amphitheater here, so you've got a, a nice setup. You can see the uh, the greenery behind the stage. There's also a, a large hill for com uh, spectators to sit on and check out the action today from a safe distance, Tony. Yes, safe distance indeed is the key there. As you can hear, the engine's revving. Tests are underway. You could hear those in the background. And it sounds like after be talking to Ben Hansen that you got to have your saw at the right RPMs before it can hit that wood. Otherwise, it will die out on you. And that's something that you, with the specifications that these, these athletes train with and, and, and test with all, all the time going into the event. Richard Jordan there losing a chain. So he's going to have to come in and reset his saw. So, so Matt, Co Matt Coger going at it alone, trying to, after... Uh, after Richard Jordan uh, blew a chain there, uh, we're going to get a, a, some clarity from from our man uh, Bryce here on what happens next. Uh, yeah, guys, that's an automatic DQ for Richard Jordan on that. The PA came over the top there for just a second. So uh, unfortunately for him, that's going to end his day. And I know he was right in the middle there as far as points were concerned. So that's got to be uh, a real uh, a real bummer for him. Matt Koger finished up the event, looked like he finished his day strong. Going into this final heat, he was the leader with 29 total points. Closest to him was Jason Lentz at 22 points, who will be a participant in the final heat here. It's going to be Jason Lentz going against Mike Sullivan in the final heat of the day. So we've seen uh, two ch circumstances here where competitors have really gotten hampered by their machinery. And that's the that's the ups and downs of the hot saw competition. I mean, you get that stock saw out, you know it's gonna perform for you. It's not nearly as fun, probably yeah. for the competitors or the fans. Exactly, that's one of the things we talk about going in is how are these guys preparing for this event and how are they available to make sure that their equipment will be uh, will will be good for them good for them to roll as we uh, as we go to a replay of Koger's victory coming up here in a second a a as we said before Richard Jordan was automatically disqualified for blowing a chain and 
You see the precision, you see the saw. Now talk to the man himself. It's Bryce Hopward with Matt Koger. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Adam. And I'm here with Matt. Matt, you had a tremendous day in all six of your disciplines. You're uh, well on your way to the Nationals again. Uh, what does it mean for you, buddy? Yeah, just, uh, you know, come out for the qualifier. Of course, you want to do well. And, you know, I treat every run I can with, with like it being in the finals. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff I need to work on yet. But, you know, we're, that's just for the next round. And, uh, had a great uh, cut there with uh, DC Hot Sauce, Dennis Cahoon out in Ca Chico, California. Definitely thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. All right, you're gonna head to Nationals once again, my friend. So uh, have a good time out there and we're uh, definitely proud, glad to have you today. Uh, thanks, man. And look forward to coming back from Milwaukee. That's uh, it's gonna be a great time. It, it sure will, hopefully we'll get to see you out there. Yeah, thank yeah. you, sir. Back to Tony and Adam in the Plain Wisconsin broadcast booth. Matt Koger excited to be heading back to Milwaukee, take part in the national championships at German Fest. He'll finish number one today as uh, we are have one final heat, but Koger running away with the competition, qualifying him for one more shot at defending his national title. Yeah, as you might imagine, a guy from West Virginia is not checking his hot saw at the uh, airport. He is driving that thing from West Virginia. Uh, these guys drive around a lot around the country because outside of the Steel Series, they're also doing a lot of other really high level events just to make sure they're staying sharp. And so they put on, I believe Adam LaSalle last year told me that you know, he put on, uh, I think it was 100,000 miles in one year when he went, which is really hardcore into it, going around to get whatever experience he could. Uh, it, it is a lot of commitment, a lot of time uh, and energy and no frequent flyer miles. No frequent flyer miles, a lot of fill-ups at the gas station, that's for sure. One final heat today, it's Jason Lentz and Mike Sullivan as they are about to test their saw engine. <laughs> Remember it in this event, as we saw last round with Richard Jordan, of break a chain, it's an automatic disqualification. We've seen two of those today. One of those being Jason Lentz earlier in the day. He is on the left of your screen in the blue. He is back and he is uh, trying to gain some ground on Matt Koger for that second place spot. Looks like they're about to start their engines again. You'll know it when they do, that's for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow, those guys were just absolutely flying. That was about three and a half seconds, and unofficially, but in my head when I was counting, it was unbelievably quick. As we go to the replay here, Jason Lentz, Mike Sullivan. That was three Mike cuts by an edge. in a six inch span. Just spraying sawdust left and right and on a windy day I don't know if the crowd considers that a souvenir but uh, <laughs> it's definitely something that they are going to take home with them you know in uh, talking to the competitors about this event you don't even feel the wood essentially as you're cutting through it that's how powerful these saws are really the force is all lifting and lowering the saw that's all you're feeling and that's what goes into it it's not giving you any resistance because how powerful these saws are that's a big chunk of wood to say that about that is a giant giant chunk of wood we are going to effort one more athlete interview before we get to break here in a second i want to thank everybody who has been tuning in throughout the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier from Grundle Park in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. Really appreciate everyone who came out today. Appreciate everyone who, who tuned in to support these competitors and just made it an absolutely great event. We are moments away from crowning four more people, four more athletes who are going to qualify for the national championship in Milwaukee. It doesn't get better than that.
you know, German Fest on a late July, uh, you know, afternoon. Uh, I think that's a pretty good setting for an event like this. It should be rip roaring fun. As we were talking about before, a lot of the times the Nationals are inside. They're at a you know kind of a controlled atmosphere. Don't worry about weather being a, a factor, something being pushed back today. And uh, in this case, they get to be out in the elements with a huge festival crowd in Milwaukee. And you know they're looking forward to that. Can you imagine those hot saws indoors? Oh. oh. I think you would require earplugs for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. It would, it would get extremely loud extremely quickly. You know, and the road for some of these competitors doesn't end at nationals either. It is an international uh, steel timber sports competition. And last year it was in Germany. And uh, there's a sounds, lot of, there's like, a long road for a lot of these uh, yeah, competitors. Sound, sounds like they just announced that Matt Koger was the winner of the hot saw in 6.3 seconds. 6.3 seconds for Matt Koger. Coming up after the break, we will find out who officially came out on top of this Steel Timber Sports Midwest qualifier and who is continuing on to Milwaukee. Stay tuned, the 2017 Midwest qualifier for the Steel Timber Sports National Championship live from Mount Hora presented by Wisco Radio. Let's hear it for bite, char, pop, savory flavors that won't stop. From slow roasted tastes to long lasting memories, campfire meals at Cracker Barrel. Enjoy every little thing. Snacking has never been this exciting. To get your own free sampler box, just go to graze.com, enter the code EAT36, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. So come to graze.com for your first box free. And welcome back. A little drama at the 2017 Steel Timber Sports National Qualifier. Midwest Regional Qualifier here, as we have two competitors that are tied. And for more information, we are going to go over to our man Bryce. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Adam. And I was just over there at the official scores table, and like we said, we do have a tie. A couple of guys with 25 points at that four and five spot. So now what they do is they go and check the total times from all the disciplines and add it up and the one with the lower time will be moving on to Milwaukee. So this is big. Also a little tidbit, we're gonna have Jason Lentz over here in just a second, but he comes back from the disqualification and ends up second here. So thanks guys. Uh, back to you in the play in Wisconsin broadcast booth. Yeah, you know that's big because when you're talking about qualifiers, it's not like you got a guy tied for you know first and second here. Obviously you want, you want that first place title, but we're talking about the difference of seconds that is going to send someone packing and send someone to nationals. So that's a huge, huge deal, and hopefully we get a ruling here in a second. It's, uh, it is 2017. People have smartphones and calculators. <laughs> It'll be much quicker than it would have been, you know, 20 years ago. You know, I was just going to say I was told there would be no math. <laughs> well, luckily, no math for we're us. not performing it. Yeah, we have all unofficial times. We got the official times over there. And uh, Bryce just sprinted on over to the scorer's table to try to get uh, a final ruling for us. You need to talk about an athletic competition where you're always going back and second guessing maybe something here or there that you could have done differently or a break that didn't go your way. You imagine this is coming down to a second, to tens of seconds, to hundreds of seconds for one of these competitors to go on to nationals or to be going home. Absolutely, and one and one of the things we kept saying throughout the competition was that it's essentially it's one on seven because it's all about the times and that's where you're getting your points from. But when you know you're in a heat against someone, and we, you know we saw you know Ms. Sullivan you know slip up a little bit and take a couple extra seconds to make to to make something happen, or you know you get the one disqualification that can really come back to haunt you. Freshly back from sprinting over to 
the scorer's table. I'm going to give him a second to catch his breath here because he did legitimately sprint to the scorer's tent. It is our man, Bryce Hopwood. Thanks, Tony. You know, you give me a little too much credit, but I was just talking to the official scorer's table, and this is the first time uh, this rule has been in place, actually. It's the new to this year is that tiebreaker rule, like I said before, is for the amount of time. And not only is this the first time it's happened since the rule change, it's actually a three-way tie between three of our competitors here today. So that adds to the drama just a little bit more. This isn't uh, this isn't the storybook that your, uh, your mom read to you when you were young. This is full-on novel. They should just, guys. they should arm wrestle. Yeah, right. That's how you break the tie, just an arm wrestling tournament right here. Let's see what, uh, <laughs> what would happen here. You got some big guys up there, guys. Yeah, you definitely have some big guys competing in this, in this tournament. You definitely have uh, a lot of, a lot of interesting things as you look at the competitors kind of, you know, going around to the scorer's tent. And as, as, as we take a look here at some of the equipment from throughout the day. This reminds me, Tony, if you're an NFL fan, you get those scenarios coming in from about, uh, you know, week week 14 where you're thinking about where your team's going to finish in the wild card yes. and which uh, conference record is better and, uh, you know, who played who and their percentage. Uh, a lot of drama, a lot of drama at this thing here. And, and uh, I'm sure they're going to be, calculating this more than once to make sure that they have all these times correct. Yeah, absolutely. They want to make sure they get it down to the absolute second so they can figure out. And they have not released yet either uh, publicly the, the, the three that are tied with those 25 points. Uh, the hot saw competition finished things out. They didn't release the – they released Koger won that one. Yeah, and we can roll back through what we had ahead of time. This was b through five events and not six, but it was Matt Koger out front with 37, Jason Lentz 29, Derek Knudsen 22, Cassidy Shear 21, Adam LaSalle at 20. Uh, yeah, there's kind of a bunch up there that uh, it's not surprising that they came close down the wire, but for three to tie, uh, that, that's a lot. That a lot of things have to happen for that to work out the way it did. Yeah, absolutely. And we we were talking earlier how you know we had the winner of each event over here for an interview, and uh, we thought we talked to everyone. So that kind of tells you what a uh, what a crowd that w that is going to be with some of the people who were who were victorious. And uh, once again, fresh back from from sprinting from the scorers table, it's our man Bryce Hopwood. Thanks, Tony. We actually have a uh, a little hand scoring going on too. The the spreadsheet was not designed on the old. Uh, on the old uh, computer and laptop to go through scores that way. So they had to write them down and they're tallying right now. So I'm about to get my 100 yard dash on and head back over there to give you the quickest news. And uh, according to our uh, recent scoring here from our broadcast booth, uh, we have the three that were involved and confirm this for me, Bryce, if you know, Adam LaSalle, Derek Knudsen, and Cassidy Shear. I believe that is the exact three, and that is the that is the case. And then you had in that third place spot Sullivan with 27, so he saved himself by just a, a couple. But like I said, 100 yard dash here, and I'll be back in a second for a little more. Thanks, Bryce. Well, thanks so much for your hard work, Bryce. We appreciate you getting the scoop on everything for us. So that's three all on that fourth spot. We were kind of waiting to see uh, if this was a matter of three in that three to four, uh, but it's three sitting on that fourth spot. As we take a look at some of the uh, aftermath. The carnage. Like, yeah, seriously, it looks like a hurricane came through. But uh, just, you know, making sure that all everyone kind of just experiences what we have today and you know some of the hard work and things that get put into this event so yeah hopefully we get a ruling here soon and then we're able to uh to talk to some of the uh the athletes who who were victorious today and and, and get their take on you know kind of a dramatic ending to what was a great day of competition You know, and you're here for the uh, for the second year in Mount Horeb. Um, things were pretty clear cut last year. We didn't have to deal with this at all. There was a little bit of spread. All right, we are now going to have the contestants approach the stage here. It's official, the winner of 
the Midwest Regional Qualifier is Matt Koger with 45 points. Coming in second, Jason Lentz. Jason Lentz. Looks like Mike Sullivan is going to be th in third place here today. After the times were tallied and the tapes were reviewed, Cassidy Shear finishes fourth and is headed to Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the national championship of the Steel Timber Sports Series. Congratulations. You have Matt Koger, Jason Lynch, Cassidy Shear, all headed to my hometown, actually, Milwaukee, Wisconsin for German Fest and the national championship. A little drama, high stakes, one heck of a day here at Grundle Park in Mount Horrible, Wisconsin. Adam, thanks for thanks for having me as part of the broadcast team today. Uh, Bryce, great job with interviews all day today. What are your guys' thoughts? You know, we came here and we saw excellence out of Matt Koger as we expected, kind of given his uh, pedigree and his track record. Uh, saw a very even competition, as I kind of imagine it might be behind that. And for Cassidy Shear to come out and take that last spot, it's a guy who's essentially a rookie, long history in lumber sports, but not in chopping and sawing. For him to do it is a huge, huge thing. I want to shock you. And uh, uh, we're being, uh, is that video bombing? Or I'm not, I'm not too sure what just happened there. A crazed fan <laughs> talking to our, our sideline reporter, Bryce Hopwood. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Adam. The official scorers over there wanted to come and thank me for my job. I thank you for doing your job so I could give the nice people who watch this one a good time. But uh, as you guys mentioned, you know, Lentz comes back here and gets second. So that was, a, that was huge uh, for him. And uh, I was going to get him to come over here, but uh, the heat got to him a little bit, and he had uh, uh, what we'll call a uh, barley pop, for lack of a better term. And, and now they're all uh, celebrating over there, and Shear comes in, as he said. You know, I thought it went well. Uh, you know, you guys did a great job. we got two professionals over here to my left uh, who know how to really do it. And uh, I'm going to send it back to you guys one last time in the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth. Bryce, fantastic job today. That is Bryce Hopwood, bright, bright future in the media world, even getting thank yous from the scorers, the official scorers here at the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier, as we have four new qualifiers for the national championship games that will take place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at German Fest. We're going to head to break. We'll wrap things up on the other side. This is the Steel 2017 Timber Sports Series. Opportunity sales event is going on now. Take on the tough jobs in a powerful Kubota Standard L Series. With the right combination of dependable horsepower and ease of operation, they're perfect for the independent property owner. Now get financing as low as 0% APR for up to 84 months. Now through June 30th, 2017. Call toll free 1 800 794 4992 for details about cost and terms. Richie Implement, your local Kubota dealer, located in Cobb, Barville, and Darlington, Wisconsin has never been this exciting. At Graze.com, we combine wholesome ingredients with the flavors we all love to create over 100 exciting snacks, like these. We'd love to send you a Graze sampler box for free. Just go to Graze.com, enter the code ENJOY24, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. Join thousands of Grazers already in love with our exciting snacks. So come to Graze.com for your first box free. In these troubled times, wouldn't you feel safer being able to quickly access the gold in your gold-backed IRA rather than having it locked up in some undisclosed depository someplace? Introducing the Home Storage Gold IRA from Capital Gold Group. Now you can unlock your gold with a Home Storage Gold IRA and keep it in your home safe or a safe deposit box, someplace you have quick access to. The Home Storage Gold IRA has all the benefits of other gold-backed IRAs without giving up your right to store your gold. So the question is, do you want control of your gold IRA? 
or not. Call now for your free home storage gold IRA brochure. Call in the next 15 minutes and Capital Gold Group will give you a safe to store your gold. Call Capital Gold Group now at 800-518-3927. That's 800-518-3927. Call now. Let's hear it for bite, char, pop, savory flavors that won't stop. From slow roasted tastes to long lasting memories, campfire meals at Cracker Barrel. Enjoy every little thing. Welcome back. We are live from the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Midwest Regional Qualifier. We have had a great day. Six disciplines come through here. Everything from the hot saw to the springboard to the to the single buck. We had a guy, Matt Koger, who is looking to defend his national title in a couple weeks in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at German Fest. He ran away today with 45 points, giving him the championship today and that first place medal. There was a little bit of drama toward the end. Adam, you want to fill people in on how that kind of panned out? New tiebreaker rules in effect this year. The fourth spot for the uh, Nationals out of this qualifier. Three competitors tied for that uh, spot, and they had to go to a formula to figure out total time uh, in this competition through all six disciplines. At the end of the day, Cassidy Shear emerges as your fourth place qualifier. So those little milliseconds count in every event. And that's big when you have the the fourth place. You know there was a tie, there was a little bit of drama, and you and you're able to then figure out who is the person who's going to qualify for that national competition. Uh, as we look back at the scoreboard. Uh, the scoring update brought to you by our friends over at Hellwig. And uh, you, you, you see there Matt Koger coming out on top. Jason Lentz in second place with 35 points. Mike Sullivan, 27. And like you said, Cassidy Shear with 25 points. They, Cassidy was tied with Derek Knutson and Adam LaSalle going into uh, the final tally. So what they did is they added everybody up, their times from every discipline, and they figured out, all right, Cassidy Shear actually beat beat out Knutson by six total seconds, and that's why Cassidy is headed to Milwaukee as a qualifier for the national championship. It's going to take place at German Fest in Milwaukee. Run again through you one time real quick from our friends at Hellwig. Matt Koger, Jason Lentz, Mike Sullivan, Cassidy Shear all headed to Milwaukee, and as he's done all day, we are going to have our man Bryce Hopwood interviewing First and second place champions, Matt Koger and Jason Lentz. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Here to my left is number one, and here to my right is number two. Matt, we'll start with you for just a second. Uh, you had great runs all day in all your disciplines. Uh, you know, you're used to having great runs in your disciplines. Talk about a little bit what it means going back to the championships here in uh, Milwaukee. Uh, usually your qualifiers are a really good chance just to brush up on stuff to do well at the championships and you know there's there's always some stuff you got to work on but uh, it was good uh, good event to have Adam LaSalle did a great job putting this event on and uh, thanks to the guys out here at the summer frolic in Mount Horb and uh, yeah it's just a good time to come out and have a good time chopping. Thank you hope to see you again and now we'll head over to you Jason you know you had a, a DQ early but you didn't let that stop you and you took second pretty handily for the most part so uh, talk about that a little bit and what you did in your last couple disciplines to really help yourself out. Well yeah I messed up there in the stock stall uh, got the motor a little too close to the wood and it kicked me over I had to uh, kind of skate through my first cut which led to the DQ um, but yeah I moved on from there last year in the finals uh, had the same Instant circumstance happened. I got DQ'd in the stock saw, and I lost my head there today. I just tried to keep, tried to keep my composure and uh, take it event by event. Well, you know, your dad was a champion before, so now you get to go prove yourself again there and see if you can pull it out, and you'll be having to face this guy a little bit. Uh, hope hope uh, to see you there, and uh, hope to see your best. So thank you, guys. Shake your hands, and I'll send it back one more time to Tony and Adam in the Plain, Wisconsin broadcast booth. Thanks, Bryce. He's with Matt Koger and Jason Lentz finishing first and second respectively in today's 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier for the Steel Timber Sports. 
both of those guys will be participating in the national championships in Milwaukee later on this summer. Now, a special treat for everyone. We are going to revisit some of the best events from today, starting with the springboard discipline. That was the first event from today. And, you know, it's been a long afternoon. You may have forgot what it looked like. So uh, we are now going to bring you a replay of the springboard discipline from the Midwest Regional Qualifier of the 2017 Steel Timber Sports. Springboard chop, Tony, is a great way to start this event during the day. As, as one of the competitors was saying, how much it gets your adrenaline flowing. Uh, you're looking at having to make two cuts into that uh, nine-foot trunk and put a springboard in to give yourself some height so you can cut into the 11-inch white pine at the top. As our competitors get underway here, as we are watching a replay of the springboard from uh, from earlier in the day, it's one of those events where it takes a lot of risk because you have to make sure that you are very comfortable in in placing that springboard into the trunk so you can uh, you know, stand on up to do your next chop. So it is uh, definitely a very exciting event, a very risky event, and uh, one heck of a way to start your day. You know, and uh, there, there was uh, one, we saw one issue here. You, you'd expect to see a little bit more, but these guys are such trained professionals. Adam LaSalle had a little difficulty getting his second springboard in to get that full seven feet off the ground and get a good knock. Uh, it, that that cost him. You know, at the end of the day, that's Adam LaSalle is one of those guys that was, he was tied for fourth and the chance to move on, and I'm sure he's kicking himself. He had put in that second springboard and went up on it and rightfully didn't trust it. Yeah. Saw it wobbling a little bit. Yep, just those few seconds ended up costing you. And you, you said when they w went back and looked and Cassidy Shear advanced to Nationals, it was a uh, six-second differential between uh, between him and the rest of the pack. And that's what was able to propel him into the national championship in Milwaukee. We'll be facing the likes of Matt Koger and Jason Lentz and uh, other great competitors from across the country. You're watching Derek Knutson and Ben Hansen on your screen there left to right at this point. This is our opening tandem in heats. I really love this discipline because of the uh, kind of the balance that it requires. You're up there and you're swinging through across your body. Uh, you don't want to follow through too hard on that thing and when you're seven feet off the ground with a big ax. Oh, absolutely. It's definitely one of the coolest disciplines, the way those guys kind of shimmy up that uh, shimmy up that trunk and are able to uh, to kind of just chuck away at the and chop away at the wood on top there. That's an 11-inch uh, piece of white pine that's not easy to chop through whatsoever. So it's uh, it takes extreme skill, but it is, uh, it's is—it's definitely really cool to watch. And uh, Derek Knutson made his way through through this one uh, almost flawlessly, but he was uh, also afterwards, he wasn't thrilled with his performance. That was another one of our uh, gentlemen who tied for fourth place. You go through and he got that one through pretty cleanly, but we didn't get a final score update in terms of the total time to know what the difference in time was. But after every athletic competition, you know you're thinking about little things that you could have done differently. I'm sure that both Adam and Derek will be thinking about that tonight. Absolutely. As uh, we are going to continue replaying uh, bits and pieces of today's competition throughout the, uh, throughout the afternoon here. Uh, including the springboard, the hot saw, the standing block. Uh, we believe we got some some interviews from some winners as well. So uh, a lot of fun stuff ha fun stuff happening this afternoon as as uh, as we are going to set up for uh, another replay from the uh, from the springboard competition. We have uh, Richard Jordan on your left and Adam LaSalle on your right. Second heat of the springboard chop this morning. And you'll see here Adam's difficulty. He gets that in clean. He gets that second springboard in clean. Watch the wobble as he's getting up there. Does not trust it.
just chopping away. Love the different camera angles as you can kind of see the way these guys chop with just different technique on each one, yes. whether it's a V chop or they're chopping straight away and you know, kind of measuring up that pine to see what angle they have to attack it from. There is a, it's more than what people think it is. There is an art form to this and uh, and it's it's tough to do and a lot of these guys prove today that you have to be the best of the best if you're going to compete at these high levels. You know, Tony, and your point there about the different camera angles, we were able to bring you today all our replay. What about our, our production crew here and our camera crew this afternoon doing their job out there in that 87-degree heat? Uh, kind of an intense competition. I want to make sure that you capture the best shots that you can out there. Absolutely. Our camera guys, Peyton, we had you know Blaine running the show uh, in, in the background here. Just an incredible job. Uh, from Wisco, R Wisco Radio, uh, the first opportunity that I've had to uh, to work with the Wisco Media Group and Wisco Radio, and uh, Blaine put on a top-notch performance today. Definitely want to make sure to get all those guys credit. I know the guy who uh, was smart enough to only keep you and I on camera for a couple seconds here and there <laughs> was our man Peyton. Uh, he, he, he had the spotlight on Bryce most of the time, which is definitely definitely the way to go. I'm going to second that uh, that notion, Tony. That was <laughs> fantastic strategy. Absolutely. As we finish up the uh, the springboard here, and uh, and it looks like we are going to uh, kick it on over to uh, to another interview in a little bit. As uh, uh, Bryce Hopwood seems to have a uh, a special guest from the uh, a from very the special guest. Yes, yes a this very special Adrian guest. Adrian Flick, and we're going to have Bryce Hopwood take over with him. Yep, I'm here with Adrian. Adrian, it was uh, fun to hear you on the PA system, a big man within the Timber Sports world, obviously. And uh, how do you think it went here in Mount Horde for the second year? Well, it was a great contest, fun to be here, always fun to be down to start the start the season here, start the summer here. It's when I really feel like I've gotten home and uh, we're going to cut some wood. And always fun you know, also to be around the enthusiasm, cool community outreach here, and a lot of revved up people from the city of Mount Horde and from the surrounding areas, so lots of fun. Well, I'll tell you what, I was a little starstruck this morning when I had to meet you for uh, doing this. Uh, watch the, the Still Timber Sports website to, you know, come and learn really about my first time uh, as surrounded about the sports. You know, I usually click past it if I'm being wholeheartedly honest yeah, yeah. Uh, when it's on TV normally. But uh, it's really cool. It's cool to be right down here by the action. And it's uh, what do you think is important for uh, the future of the sport? I say the cool thing about this sport, everybody's trying to help each other out, and it's real. It's a big family thing. We travel all around to help each other out. I've been down here helping Adam this week, and you know that's what you do for your friends and for your family. For the future of the sport, it's it's to me that everybody says, oh, it's a pasture party. It's just you know it's redneck Olympics, and it's like there's a bunch of bunch of people who spend time and money and thousands upon thousands of dollars training themselves up physically. This isn't like you can buy yourself the fastest saw and then win every event. You can buy yourself the best axe. Everybody's got a pile of wood chips at home. They got calluses on their hands, and they're trying to pay into you know pay into it because what do they say excellence isn't uh, isn't owned it's rented and you got to pay every day so there's a bunch of hard-working people you see the sport especially in the midwest growing there's a bunch of young guys early 20s came through the collegiate ranks want to keep climbing the ladder want to get to this stage and then want to get to the semi-final stage making that investment you got to stay dedicated to the sport and uh, got to both train yourself up train your mind up train your body up I like that. And, you know, talking about the future, we had two collegiate champions here from the UW Stevens Point, which is here in Wisconsin. So uh, seeing that was really cool, and especially seeing a hometown hero kind of guy like Ben Hansen here uh, was also a great experience. Uh, do you see that a lot with, uh, you know, going around when you have the other uh, regional qualifiers? Out here it's more based, particularly based in Point. We actually had a total of four guys from Point. Uh, in addition to Adam and Ben, Rainer Shooter and Andrew Golnick are guys who came up in that program after Adam LaSalle and climbed up the ranks to being regional champions and going on the collegiate uh, national championships. I did that in the western region uh, when I was in graduate school getting my start in co competition. Out here it's really university based. Out west and back east you have a lot more families. We have two or three, four generation competitors, guys who grew up coming to these contests when they were this big. They start pulling a saw when they're this big and when they get to be this big, they're the guys who are putting down the fastest cuts. Well, you know, uh, looking into this, like I said, I had not a whole lot of prior knowledge of the sport uh, going into it. And then you see and you look at ch past champions. Uh, you see Matt Kogar, who is uh, a past champion uh, a couple times in a row now uh, as far as the U.S. stage is concerned. And then you see, like, Jason Luntz, uh, who's had a, a family history. His father had won a couple championships. And then it was also cool to see a guy like Mike Sullivan uh, out here tonight who was going uh, to Milwaukee again after getting third here in the regional. Uh, you see him, and he was a champion in 
85 in the first series. So do you think that that kind of longstanding history throughout the sport kind of uh, keeps people interested and keeps them here too? That's the craziest thing. Jason's father, Melvin, Melvin's closing out you know, in his older 50s, later 50s. He'll come out with the gout real bad in his toe, can hardly walk onto the stage. And as soon as they give the countdown, he's standing on his log and he's ripping off cuts, beating guys you know, a third of his age. It's really cool in this sport that when you're 18 and 20 and full of it, very often you haven't made the investment in the equipment and in terms of getting your mind right to put down the fast cuts. So you're full of piss and vinegar, but you can't cut the log because you're not right in the head. And so you see somebody, very often people aren't really hitting their stride until they're 30, and that decade between 30 and 40 is when you can really make some hay. There's guys who are still 40s and 50s hanging with it, doing good work, and still cutting competitively because they've got all the right equipment, they've got the muscle, muscle memory, and they've just put down so many cuts that it's old hat, they just turned it on. Yeah, talking about guys who are really getting there, what does it take uh, for some of the younger people, like you said, start with the collegiate level, but somebody who might be like me, myself, just coming out of high school for a little bit here and uh, just maybe starting to get interested and maybe start cutting myself, what, what would you say is the first step for somebody who's learning and just seeing it for the first time? Yeah, the big thing is I think the shock and awe of, wow, this isn't easy. It's not just like splitting wood in your backyard. The second part is getting the equipment. A lot of these people, I came up through a collegiate team. Most of these guys around here came up through a collegiate team. If you come to an open contest like we have tomorrow, got a little training, you invest in axe, cut some logs. I've stayed at probably half these guys' houses trying to get trained up and you make the rounds and try and help. As long as you're not a weirdo and, and you're not awkward about it, people are trying to spread the sport and help each other. And that's the thing, a, cl a closed mouth get, gathers no boots. But keeping an open mind and trying to pick up, there's a lot of people who are trying to pass on the tradition and pass on the sport. And it's really fun to learn that because there is a historical component to this sport, not just like, okay, we play football because we've always played football. Yeah, I know. That's awesome. Thank you, sir. I, I You've earned me as a fan, that's yeah. for sure. It has <laughs> been you. great having you. Thank you very much, sir. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Guys, I'm going to send it back to you in the Plain Wisconsin broadcast booth. All right. Thanks so much for that, Bryce Hopwood. Uh, before we get to break here, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors of this event. Richie's Implement, The Electrician, Weaver Auto Parts, Helwig Auto of Mount Hora, Play in Wisconsin, and MHTC. Uh, we will wrap things up from the 2017 Steel Timber Sports Series, the national qualifier here at Grundle Park in Mount Hora, Wisconsin. Kubota's Orange Opportunity Sales Event is going on now. Take on the tough jobs in a powerful Kubota Standard L-Series. With the right combination of dependable horsepower and ease of operation, they're perfect for the independent property owner. Now get financing as low as 0% APR for up to 84 months. Now through June 30th, 2017. Call toll-free 1-800-794-4992 for details about cost and terms. Richie Implement, your local Kubota dealer, located in Cobb, Barneville, and Darlington, Wisconsin. Snacking has never been this exciting. At Graze.com, we combine wholesome ingredients with the flavors we all love to create over 100 exciting snacks, like these. We'd love to send you a Graze sampler box for free. Just go to Graze.com, enter the code ENJOY24, and we'll mail your free box to your home or office. Join thousands of Grazers already in love with our exciting snacks. So come to Graze.com for your first box free. Steel. German engineering. American manufacturing, servicing dealers, and people across America who refuse to compromise. Real people, steel people. Join us. Let's hear it for bite, char, pop savory flavors that won't stop from slow roasted tastes to long lasting memories campfire meals at cracker barrel enjoy every little thing all right guys thank you very much uh bryce Howard here with melissa Thiesen. And uh, she is the uh, chamber director here in Mount Hora. But, you know, they're starting to tear everything down here, Melissa. Another successful one. It seems like there's a huge uh, amount of fans in the, uh, in the audience. What did you think of the event? Well, if the wind didn't blow us away, these competitors totally did. I, I'm simply amazed at how resilient they are and how fantastic they are. And we are so happy to have them back here in Mount Hora. 
You know, we were just talking to Adrian. He's, he's uh, a big member of the whole uh, Still Timber Sports thing, and uh, we really enjoyed having him. Do you think that the community was looking into bringing him back? Absolutely. There's talk about it. We've, you know, we've had him, we've been blessed to have him for the last two years, and there is talk about them continuing on their com competition and growing a little bit, but maybe even we're teasing a women's competition. You know, that is a good point. There is also a women's competition as well and collegiate competitions. Do you think that uh, maybe those throughout the summer might find its way in Mount Horeb? I do. I think it's, uh, I was briefly talking to Adam. I don't want to steal his thunder or anything like that, but I think it's, it would be fantastic if we could have women come back here. Uh, there is a competition out in, in New York, he was telling me, and I think uh, to get you know, to the Midwest, we would maybe be earmarked for that. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. Well, that'd be awesome. Like I said, when I was talking to Adrian just now, you know, we were starting, really starting to uh, uh, learn about the sport a little bit, and they're starting to have a big following. And I think uh, Mount Horb would be a great place, as we try not to blow away. Yeah. Uh, it would be a great place to kind of start uh, the, the whole initiative for the thing. And, you know, there's a lot of Wisconsinites that are, are big into it. And, you know, we had a couple uh, guys from Wisconsin here tonight that uh, – we're a big part of it. So what does that mean for you to kind of bring and keep it here? Well, I am a woman, so I really want them to come here. That would be fantastic. But just um, not that's just talking about the women's competition, but definitely all steel timber sports. We just love it having here, you know, it being here. It just kind of is a highlight for the, the summer frolic to give something for people to do, give, give a diverse atmosphere for everybody to come. Uh, we have stuff for the kids, stuff for the families. We just want to keep them coming back and keeping them happy. Definitely felt like uh, the the addition to this to the summer frolic has uh, uh, really brought an extra sense of hype and uh, uh, happiness or uh, excitement to the frolic uh, that we've had. And, and I know there's a new company here with the rides and everything, so it's uh, it's been a, absolutely fantastic and exciting. Thank you, Melissa. Shake Thank your you. hand. No Thank problem. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Really, you guys did a fantastic job. And also, thank you to all the volunteers and everybody that goes into the, and behind the scenes that that make this happen. Yes, one last thanks and one last time to the Play in Wisconsin broadcast booth with Tony and Adam. Well, we want to make sure everyone is aware of the, the winners from today. And it's brought to you by our friends at Weaver. This Weaver scoreboard update uh, is brought to you by Weaver Auto Parts. Weaver Auto Parts, leave it to Weaver. Matt Koger brings home the championship today and qualifies for the national championship in Milwaukee with 45 points. Jason Lentz, 35 points. Mike Sullivan with 27 and Cassidy Shear with 25. Those are the four that are all qualified for the national competition in Milwaukee as part of German Fest. Also need to shout out Derek Knutson, Adam LaSalle, Richard Jordan, and Ben Hansen. All four competitors uh, competed their hearts out today and were unable to qualify for the national championship, but definitely left a lasting impact on this community and a uh, talking about that sport. Yeah, you know, the community support out here was tremendous today, and as we discussed throughout the broadcast, these competitors are paying attention to that. Absolutely. They're coming out, they're playing to the crowd a little bit. Uh, the cookies that get cut off, they're being stamped with the steel uh, logo and handed out to a lot of kids here, so you never know when that next lumberjack is going to come from, <laughs> where where, and when, and it could be Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. A absolutely, and uh, as a bonus treat to uh, to our fans still tuned in today, we're going to go back to the first event of the day, the springboard discipline, and, and show a couple awesome highlights highlights from that one to uh, to kind of wrap things up here today. Springboard chop, and is as is as are most of these events, they derive from actual lumberjacking technique out in the woods 100 years ago, 120 years ago. And uh, the springboard chop is one of my favorite events, if not the favorite, because of the kind of the skill and precision that is needed in here. This is kind of the whole tradition started because you're cutting logs on hills a lot of the times. Okay. You, you have one guy on one side and one on the other, and you have to make sure that you're balanced out in terms of your height. So they learn how to put springboards into trees. So there's your little history, history update today, Tony. Very cool history lesson from Adam Mertz. Brought to you by Adam Mertz. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're seeing on the screen here, Cassidy Shear and Jason Lentz, two competitors that made it through to the Nationals. Cassidy on the left and Mike on the right. Yeah, or they excuse both. Excuse me, Jason on the right. They both started things out really strong today, starting with the springboard challenge. But then, you know, we talked to all of them about how the heat and everything would affect them and, uh, and if that would be an issue. And they're athletes. What can you say? I mean, whether you play a football game in Green Bay where it's 40, 
uh, or you go down to Miami and play with 110 in the month of September. You you have to persevere through the through the conditions. Uh, a lot of hydration. So big shout out to uh, the safety teams here uh, for making sure that these guys were were hydrated and ready ready to play today. Uh, spending some time in the shade. You saw a couple of the guys make sure that they got into those shaded areas. Uh, when they weren't competing, and uh, just a, just an absolutely fantastic event from the scores to the volunteers. We saw some volunteers out here raking up some wood chips and everything like that, and wood chips that were a result of uh, of the springboard shop and of the hot saw and uh, the single buck and everything that went into today. Adam, what was your favorite event uh, from the afternoon? You know, springboard's always been my favorite, but uh, how can you not enjoy the hot saw? Yeah, and the, uh, hot, the hot saw was the event that uh, that put Matt kind of over the top here for 45 points. Also got Jason Lentz uh, into Milwaukee into that qualifier with uh, 35 points. The scoring update brought to you by Hellwig Auto. Uh, Mike Sullivan with the with the 27 points was able to advance, and you got Cassidy Shear with 25. And then shout out to the rest of the comp competitors from today: uh, Derek Knutson, Adam LaSalle, Richard Jordan, and Ben Hansen all. All making waves. Ben Hansen, one of the younger guys, making a name for himself in this field. Adam LaSalle, a guy who uh, puts so much hard work into setting up this event and and uh, getting everybody here and literally setting up the wood on on, on the course and, and on the stage here. So give him a huge, huge shout out for uh, for just being involved, for being a true professional, and uh, and also competing at a very, very high level today. You're seeing on your screen here, uh, this would be the Heat 4 of the Springboard Chop. That's Mike Sullivan on your left and Matt Coger, the defending U.S. champion, on your right. And he's headed back to Milwaukee as well. It's a no one's surprise. He is. And uh, he, afterwards, he, you know, we sat down with him and he was talking about how he used today as just uh, a, a kind of a platform to continually get better. And it's one of those things where you can chop so much wood at your house and, and, and when you're training. But, you know, competition is where you thrive and competition is where you get better. And Matt Coger came out today and and uh, wanted to compete at a high level because he knows that the rest of the people in today's crowd were were so talented that there really wasn't room for error. I mean, if you look at second place in Jason Lentz, Jason Lentz was disqualified from an event early in the competition because uh, of a non-precise uh, saw. So he, he, you know, he didn't get any points there, was DQ'd and still finished in second place. That's how tight this competition can be. Rarely have we ever seen the final three competitors who are fighting for that four spot all tie and have to do a hand added up tally of all their times from the day to make sure that they had the right guy advancing to the national championship. And that ended up being Cassidy Shear by a total of, was it six seconds? I mean, that, 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 that's close. And that kind of takes, it's more of a testament to the co level of competition out here. Oh, six seconds over six events. You're kind of uh, thinking back through maybe we're, some things could have been a little bit different for you along the way. And, and as we saw Adam LaSalle there, have a difficult time in the springboard shot. Uh, but uh, how, how much fun was this today, getting out oh, here absolutely. and seeing these guys compete? There's so much on the line. This is a, a passion-driven sport. I mean, these they're going on and they're making some money out of this, but this is not a career for most of these guys. This is something that they dedicate a lot of their lives to and come out and help set up, uh, pass along their tips to the next generation that will be coming out here tomorrow in the open competition and try to break their way into the next level. It's a it's a neat sport, and it's a neat uh, community that's evolved around it. Richie Implement, the electrician, Weaver Auto Parts, Hellwig Auto of Mount Horeb, Play in Wisconsin, MH MHTC, all great partners, great sponsors of this event, and today would not have been possible. Without them, we would not have been able to bring you the live broadcast without our great friends and great sponsors there. Uh, Adam, thanks so much for having me out here today and able to uh, to broadcast this with, this with you. An absolutely great time. Shout out to Matt Koger for uh, for winning and qualifying for the German Fest National Championship that will take place in Milwaukee. A uh, huge, huge shout out to Bryce Hopwood, who was running back and forth all day, sideline reporting, getting information, injury updates, the whole deal, scoring uh, disputes. Uh, Bryce had everything covered from our cameraman, Peyton, uh, to our producer, Blaine, in our ear, uh, counting us down along the way. Big, big shout out to everyone that made today's broadcast possible. If you are still paying attention to the live broadcast here today, there is going to be a fun uh, steel timber sports competition at Grundle Park in Mount Horb tomorrow. Make sure to get out here. Uh, it's part of the summer frolic. Make sure to come support the local Mount Horb community at the summer frolic. A great time being had by all. And yes, there is a beer tent 
So make sure to visit that as well. For Wisco Radio, for Adam Mertz, for our producer Blaine, for our cameraman Peyton, I'm Tony Cartagena. This has been the 2017 Midwest Regional Qualifier for the Teal Stimber Sports. Congrats to Matt Koger on winning the championship.